Hey, what's up, listener? Thank you for pressing play on this episode of the Jock and Nerd Podcast. We geek out about the possible villains in the next Spider-Man movie. Cartoon Network is shitting on my childhood with this new Thundercats show. We got news about the American and Japanese Godzilla shared universes and more stupid shit from the internet. Somebody touch my spaghetti! Plus, you're going to get our full spoiler thoughts for Deadpool 2. It's bigger, but is it better? Find out all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Thursday, May 24th, 2018. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Jock and Nerd. Uh, my name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. And he's the rug boy. What's up, rugs? What's up? Call me Rug Pinder. Rug for today, he will be Rug Pinder. And Anthony, you have signed in as Imran Pool. Oh, Imran shit. Pool. Not very original, but I mean, when you got Gwen Pool in the, in the MC yeah. Everything can Marvel be a pool. Comics Universe, yeah. anything can be pool at this point. You can Gwen anything, and you can pull anything in Marvel. I would like to see comics. what Imran Pool would actually look like in a character design. It would be it would be the mask, uh-huh. the, the same Deadpool mask, okay. with the eyes. Yes, but then you would see that fucked up beard he's got <laughs> that he dyes white. <laughs> and then the rest of my costume, I would be shirt cocking it, people. I'm just gonna shirt cock it, just a shirt, no pants, uh, flapping in the breeze, oh, nerd. Deadpool style. Someone draw that and send it Shirt in. Shirt cocking it. <laughs> Shirt cocking it. You know, we'll get to that. Uh, I don't know if that was a term invented by I don't know what that TJ means. Miller in the movie. It was in the movie, Anthony, that we're going to talk about in was very it? shortly. Yes. Oh, God. If you are a first listener, you may be as confused as Anthony is. Uh, thanks for checking us out. This is your weekly Geek Fix where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news reviews. And whatever we choose, check out the show notes for this episode, jockandnerd.com slash 222, triple deuces, yo. Uh, For everything we talk about, links to all the articles, links to how to subscribe to the show so you don't miss the show. You can find us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. This episode, you've seen the title, we're going to do our full spoiler Deadpool review, but if you haven't seen the movie, don't worry. Because before that, we're gonna we're gonna go over some geek news. There's a couple of geek topics. Yeah, that, there's there's some things you can listen to. Th- yeah, exactly. Prior, to, but right? really though, really, really, you're a fucking moron if you click on a Deadpool spoiler <laughs> review show and don't want to be spoiled. Well, I you just, really should just like jump off this flat Earth. We, oh, really? It's flat. Yeah. It really you is know, flat. It's like all the time. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, do you spoil shit? I'm like, we always spoil shit. That's, That's all we do. Right. We've That's never done a non non spoiler no. anything. No. No, I don't like to do non-spoiler. It requires too much brain power to think about what's a fucking spoiler. Fuck that. I need to talk about this thing on the open. Yeah. But so here's the thing. If you haven't seen the movie, that's fine. You can listen to the first half of the show. Check the show notes. I put time code in there when we talk about stuff. There's going to be some fun geek topics, everything from Godzilla to Thundercats to Spider-Man that I want to get you guys' thoughts on. And then we will do our full spoiler review of the sequel for Deadpool 2. Before we get to that, though, uh, between the time we sat down to record, listener, Anthony spent a fair amount of time in lovely Las Vegas. Bro, do you even podcast? The Bro Mecca uh, <laughs> at EDC, uh, 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 the EDM Carnival. Anthony, let me ask you this. Uh, how many hours, how many days were you there and how many hours of sleep did you get in that time? Let's start there. Um, well, first off, I want to start by saying that not only was it EDC, but it was a wedding weekend. Oh, boy. So, we, there was a wedding Friday with one of my college friends, and we all decided to do, go to EDC to celebrate after the wedding and Damn. just kind of celebrate Vegas, too. Yeah. So I was there from Saturday to 
Saturday morning to Tuesday, but I kind of count Friday in there because I was open bar wedding the entire so that, time. And that was another wedding, a separate wedding. What do you mean? Was that the same wedding? That was not the same. Like you went to two weddings and one no, in no. Vegas. The wedding, we celebrated the wedding in Chicago. Oh, and then everyone then went to everyone Vegas. Everyone went to Holy Vegas shit. after the wedding. Yeah. So the Damn. wedding was wedding on Friday and, and then you red-eyed it to Vegas Saturday. Yeah, I mean, six days, 8 a.m. flight. So okay. Wow, okay. It's a whole horrible. thing. horrible. But um, I was in Vegas Tuesday to Saturday. I would say between, or Saturday to Tuesday, I would say including that Friday, I probably got... 14 hours of sleep at most. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. So, how you feeling right now, buddy? Uh, you've been back a day, and uh, I, I, is it getting hard to recover as you get it's, older? It's getting worse, oh, man. No. It's, oh. So, your energy like, I, level is like the same as when John Bellotti's on here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm it, pumped. It, it, yeah. yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, it, it yeah. feels like... Feels like I'm like jet lagged right now. Oh, but you didn't Still. leave the fucking time. You went one time zone over, you motherfucker. I know that's the worst part. Two time zones, actually. <laughs> Jeez, see, all right, Still, but it's but, not like you flew in from New Zealand. I know, I know. It's today yeah. Is there's just a lot awful. of things that wreak havoc on your body. You got the plane. You got all the drugs. You got the lack of sleep. You <laughs> got this terrible alcohol. music blasting in your ears for like <laughs> a week. <laughs> your your head's all fuzzy. You're dehydrated because you have uh, shot out all your liquids. Is that the way you smell? Yeah, like I mean, it's every gonna, liquid. It's gonna be draining. Jizz, every liquid, everything. sweat, yeah, yeah everything. Just oh, everything's drain, flying man. out of how. Us. Okay, big. Here's the big question: time, adulting time, Anthony. How much longer can you keep up with this lifestyle, buddy? I don't know, man. I mean, every year I'm like, this is it. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and then I kind of get reeled back in. Yeah. Um, I don't see a reason. Why I can I should do this again though? It was, <laughs> oh, no. it was a wedding. Yeah, like this is my fourth time going yeah. to this festival. Yeah, I mean maybe I should go to a different festival. Maybe try point. someplace else. Right. Um, but if you're any fan of uh, this terrible music, this is the <laughs> uh, this is the mecca of it, man. Yeah. So uh, plus it's Vegas, it's magical, man. and yeah, it's, Vegas, it's Vegas, man. Ve like we did EDC Saturday, Sunday. If shout out to David Zika, I know he went to EDC Orlando and he was oh, he telling did, me about right. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Um, David Zika, if you like EDM, go do it. It'll, you'll be mind blown. Uh, so we did EDC Saturday, Sunday, and then we did a pool party Monday and a club Monday night. And oh, I mean, it's just by, by Tuesday, my the flight home was one of the most miserable flights ever. Oh, in my Jesus. Life. You, know, you came like, into man, work still looking all fucking hurt. I was like, oh, man, what'd you do to yeah, yourself? I had all of Wednesday to recover, yes. and I just didn't. You got to ah, see Deadpool. All fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you go to EDC. I mean, it's. I think we talked about this before, but it's 7 p.m. to 5.30 in the morning. And it takes like two hours to get home. And you're, by the time you get home, you got a shower and then it's already daylight. And then you got to you sleep for a little bit and then you get up and you're like eat. And then you're like, well, we got to get back out there. I'm exhausted just listening to that. But I still yeah. love living vicariously through your exploits, even though they may be slowing down a little so, bit. The point I is, just say, yes. For the listener, if Anthony is even yeah, less I just want to say I'm, I, I'm never any good on this podcast. <laughs> let's be honest. Like I really don't have much to say, and I'm not very eloquent, and none of the, my thoughts ever really make sense. But they're going to be even worse today. For you guys. So <laughs> I'm why. giving it my best because I care about you, listener. I'm yes. going to give you twenty percent of me today. We'll let's get, do it. Yeah, we'll squeeze out uh, uh, Anthony what we can get out of you before we get to the news. Uh, I, I think everything was squeezed out. I think now all you're getting is just. Been Already pus. squeezed out. Somebody touch my smugger. Listen, before we get to the news, I got to shout out to uh, our f friends at Stitcher. They have given us a free month of Stitcher premium to give to you, the listener. Just visit stitcher.com slash premium. Use the promo code nerd. You're going to get a free month. Check out all the cool shit they got on there. Okay, let's get to the news, fellas. Anthony's uh, got a, just a very few sparing moments left. <laughs> The Jock, the Jock and Nerd Podcast. If you want to get in touch with the show, visit our website, jockandnerd.com slash contact. For all the various ways you can reach us, Twitter, our Facebook page, you can send us a voicemail, you can send us a message, and you can join our awesome Facebook group, the Jock and Nerd Nation. It's our closed group where all the listeners hang out, get to know each other first name basis and get to know everyone's like personality and everyone like everyone is cool there. This is like, I'm so glad everybody's cool in the group. You guys are always posting great stuff. Welcome new members to the nation. Marv Sunday. Okay. Ramon Ahmed Sraban. Okay. Abu Bakr Khan. Okay. And this last one's really hard. Uh, I'll try it. Uh, 
Andai Smite. Andai Smita. Andi Sma. Oh, oh, it's Andy Smith. You oh. asshole. Andy Smith. Welcome, Andy Smith. Sorry, that was for John. Jay Seifert. Quellen. I don't know. Jay Quellen. <laughs> Welcome. Abu Bakr Khan, though. I, I Facebook stalked him. I think he is legit a small boy from Pakistan. Oh. Is technically who is joining the group. So, hey, happy Ramadan to you. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. What did you stalk, uh, Riman? Uh, no, ha- not the other Sarabha? ones. And Marv Sunday is just a great name. It's like Marvel Sunday, just one letter off. I don't know if that's a uh, that's a great name too. Great names Marv, in the group. If Marv. you start posting weird shit from overseas, yeah, I'm banning you. <laughs> Marv, is that where they're from? Yeah, We're no, watching you, Marv. Be, right? I, I just I just got to assume Marv. You know, we got the stereotypical packy names. Yeah. And, Riman, so I'm going to pick on Marv instead. Uh, a couple of updates from some of our listeners and members of the nation. Joe from work. You guys remember Joe from work, right? Yeah. Uh, he was on our uh, Force Awakens uh, review. Well, he's just Joe now. Oh, shit. No longer he, he, Joe from work. No longer from work. Yeah. So, look, Joe, buddy, uh, I didn't even, he didn't, I didn't get to say goodbye to him. Like, uh, uh, that morning, I had a, my tire blew out on the way to work. On the expressway, I and I wow. had to get pull over, and it was, I had to get a whole new set of tires. I get to work after lunch, and they're like, "Oh, Joe's gone," and there's a stack of comic books on a, just random comic books on my desk with a with a set from Joe. And so, thanks for the comics, Joe. You're always going to hear us here, right in once in a while. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, and if Joe, if you you ever want to come on the show, you don't have to be from work. No, you can just be Joe. Show. He's just Joe now. Yeah, like <laughs> we don't work with Rug Boy. No, we don't. And thank God we don't because he's yes. unemployed. Yeah, yes, and I always will be. Yes, yeah. and he always gets caught in the printer. It's very, it's, it's, it's horrible. Strange. Yeah. So yeah, you don't have to necessarily be from work no. to be on the show. So Joe, I'll miss you, but you know where to find us. Say hi. Uh, Glenn Smith has some sick tattoos, and you can see pictures of the tattoos in our Facebook group. He's got full sleeve like Pokemon tattoos. Are we gonna start like just putting people's tattoos uh, on our yeah. show now? Come on, Imran. What dude, are we but doing here? this one is sick, dude. I have to say, I just want to tell him his last I mean, but name. But like, Smith. if you're like Joe from Nebraska, do yeah. you give a fuck about? Like, can I Glenn send you Smith's a picture tattoos? of my of the warts on my balls? It's like, can please you put those do. On? Okay, moving on. One let's last have a filter. So <laughs> let's, let's not post everything we do on. Yeah, on we here. love them, but come on. Lo- okay, Blake Braden has a great idea. We're gonna try this. Blake Braden posted, I've got a grand idea for a new segment on Jock and Nerd, simply titled Rug Boy Reads Tweets by Stan Lee as Stan Lee. Oh, shit. Uh, Rugs, do me a favor. Just click that link. There's one tweet in particular I want you to read as Stan Lee. I think you know which one. It's a crazy tweet. Oh, the United States has a president, but I want to be president of the world. Hot the, damn, is that, that is amazing. But you know well, how, like, uh, yes. you know how uh, that's exactly the same voice that I use. It's not really doing anything. <laughs> anything else. But like the thing about Stan Lee is that there's Stan Lee, like when you see him in like in a in a candid interview, he's got yeah. the New York accent. Yeah. And then there's Stan Lee when he does the voiceovers for the yeah, cartoons. Yes. yes. He tries to dial back his absent accent. He says, like, instead of saying Spider-Man, he goes yeah. Spider-Man. Right. Like right. He, you could next time you watch like Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Listen to him. He's trying to enunciate too much. It's great. Because you know those people are like, Stan, you have to say the whole word. Yeah, you, you can't, can't say Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> what are He's you talking Spider-Man. about? But I came up with Spider-Man. Yes. Uh, no, that's a great bit. And uh, I would vote for Stan Lee, I guess. Sure. Why yeah. not? <laughs> Why not? He doesn't really want to be president. No, he doesn't. He wants to be president of Marvel. He's fucking old, man. Just like our current president. He doesn't really want yeah. to be president. Last thing. Remember last week, Just I shouted out Justin Zwerner because he, he always writes all hail King Imran. And then we asked him, well, what's Anthony? Well, Justin Zwerner has answered by posting all hail King Imran and his loyal stable boy, Anthony. Talking nerd. Oh, shit. That's what Well, the yeah, stable boys happened. always get the chicks. So. They do. You've seen those porns. I've seen those videos. Yeah. The king's rarely. Justin Swerner, I will crush you. <laughs> <laughs> I will wreck you. You're lucky you. that he's weak. He, he's knocked out a peg this week. He would have been telling you to fuck off. Anthony will wreck you in a Pokemon gym. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Not a real well, gym. That's, that's what's his name's thing. Oh, Matt yeah. Miller? Yeah. Yeah. We may hear from him later. Uh, did, do you have clips from that guy? We may this hear. Week? We, I don't know. You're going to have to wait and see. Oh, fuck. Maybe something surprising. All right. Let's start with taking a quick look at how much fucking money Avengers is making still. Uh, 27 days in release. It's finally cracked 600 million domestically. 603 domestic worldwide. 1.8 billion. Got nothing more to say about that. Nothing. Movie. That's all I want to know where I'm waiting for it to get to $2 billion. However, 
You guys want to hear the vague synopsis they have put out for Avengers 4? It doesn't Huge. say anything. Really? <laughs> it's huge. Here it is. A culmination of 22 interconnected films. The fourth installment of the Avengers saga will draw audiences to witness the turning point of this epic journey. Our beloved heroes will truly understand how fragile this reality is and the fragile. sacrifices that must be made fragile to uphold it. and sacrifice. That's all we got. Fragile reality and sacrifices. Other than that, nothing. It takes talent to write a synopsis you know this big. That, uh, yeah. People are going to die. That's all. People are going to die. People come back to life. Contracts uh, are up. Contra- <laughs> contracts and are up. Some contracts still got multiple films left on them. Fragile. It must be Italian. It must be I, I, Italian. Here's my early, early predictions. Yeah. They're not necessarily mind-blowing or anything. Yeah. I think they're going to retire Iron Man. So I think he's going to go off and retire. Okay. I think they're going to. They've because they've teased twice now that Iron Man dies. That's true. In Avengers number one, and, yeah. and in, at the end of this Avengers, he gets stabbed. That's true. He retires. Cap's gonna die. That's his his plays. He's the sacrifice. Cap always dies. Yeah. And Thor, I think they finally kind of nailed Thor. Right. So I think they're gonna convince Chris Hemsworth to do some more Thor films. Sign I think up. We're still uh, getting more re- Thor. Re up on his contract. Re up on Thor with Taika. He doesn't have anything else. No, this you would be stupid not to re up. Like, there's nothing for Chris Hemsworth to do. Like, I mean, is there any other franchise that he could be? Like, he could be He Man, maybe, but that's it. Oh snap! He would be a really good. But He-Man, then he's just trading he? one stupid fuck for it's another. The same thing, yeah. yeah. It's really the same thing. He is funny though, so he could do a lot of comedy. So but- if they make another Ghostbusters movie, he does play the uh, Janine secretary role in that. Uh, he could do comedies, but like, look, I mean, I yeah, like what's going to be like as high profile. Not this. This thing made him a household name. Uh, all the Hemsworth brothers, but with Thor Ragnarok and then this performance in Infinity War, like this is a great Thor. I don't want to see it go away. I would. I don't want anybody else to be Thor right now, I guess. Uh, maybe uh, they throw enough money, but and now he can ask for more money. I just so. think they have. They finally nailed the character and they're like, we can't. We can't stop now. Yeah. No, can't like, stop. Don't weird, stop. Like, Robert Downey Jr. is both Sherlock Holmes and right and Tony Stark, and you know he's been able to pull off a lot of stuff. Johnny Depp's been able to carry two or three different franchises. That's true. But I really don't see Chris Hemsworth being that guy. I don't think he's that. You don't think he's that expandable? Mm, I mean, I don't know. Look, though, you got the one good thing. So ride that out. For, <laughs> ride that out for a while. Ride it out for. I mean, look. Milk if you disagree, you let can. me know. Nobody will be mad at you for milking that as long as you can. Chris I'll milk Hemsworth. you, Imran. Oh, you will. You got you got uh, nipples. Can I have milk nipples. You? Yes. Uh, holy shit balls! I do holy have nipples. Balls. I had to play my new clip from the Deadpool two soundtrack. Uh, okay, this news Deadpool is soundtrack. Diplo is on it. Diplo is on it. Yeah, well, that's, that's from Duplo. the score. Duplo, Duplo blocks. <laughs> that's the poor yeah. man's Lego. Yeah, Lego for really dumb kids. Isn't yeah. that what that was? What yeah, that that's what it's the giant. It's special uh, Legos. Special Lego. Uh look, big news on the Spider Man in the MCU sequel front. Apparently, Jake Gyllenhaal in talks to star as Mysterio. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna <laughs> rock the mustache. Oh, uh, uh, did Quentin back the original Mysterio is Quentin back? He had a mustache. I don't know. I want him. I don't, I don't remember. I I love this pick. I love that they're going to use Mysterio. I mean, uh, you know, Spidey's got a great rogues gallery, one of the best, and they have not used Mysterio. And there's been a lot of great stories of Mysterio. What do you guys think? I think G- Gyllenhaal's a good pick for this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's like he can pull this off. It's not even a question. I'm all. I'm all. I like. I like when they cast characters that you've never really seen as a villain. To be yeah, a villain, yeah. So. And I like that they're doing that with this franchise because they have a lot they haven't used. Like I said, the original Mysterio, there's been a couple of them. His name is Quentin Beck. He was a failed uh, movie stuntman and like VFX guy in Hollywood. But this was back in the day when like before CGI, like you're building animatronic shit. You're building these actual illusions. And this is the kind of shit he would use to fuck with Spider-Man. This in this incarnation, could it work as maybe like a failed musician? Like I kind of see him as like David Blaine who just snaps and goes evil. Or if nobody paid attention to David Blaine and he got really mad because he's the devil in real life anyways. Who's the other guy that's not the magician that has the weird hair and stuff? Uh oh, Chris Angel. Chris yeah. Angel, Ugh, that guy's a fucking joke too. I used to think what Dave if he plays like a Chris Angel type guy. Uh, Chris, well, but that's my question: is like, do you want to see this fishbowl costume? Uh, the traditional fucking it's a weird. It's a weird costume. I don't know how it's gonna look on screen. 
Well, if they kind of tone down the colors, it, it's not that bad. They could it actually probably look cool. I, I like it. Just I like it. Reminds me of when they casted Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. It's like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, him, he's yeah. Uh, normally a good guy, and now yeah. you're gonna do the same thing with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's and the same thing in, with Heath in, Ledger. A, in a role that's really yeah. fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think yeah. it's gonna be cool. Ledger's the same way. You he take does a leading play a ba- man and you make him the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. always good. And he's yeah. a, he, he's yeah. 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 He's, he's an amazing actor. Much in the way I'm, in that movie Nightcrawler, I guess he plays a really good bad guy. So he could play a weird bad guy. I'll put up this link in this image in the show notes. Uh, that dude, boss logic. You've seen his art. He does all his crazy fan art. He's kind of reimagined. He's got a, an illustration with Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. And he kind of combines the ultimate costume and the traditional costume. And it looks pretty sick. I got to look at this now. Hold on. It's it does in, look actually pretty good. Right. I would be, if it looked like that, I would be down. Also, they've confirmed Michael Keaton is coming back as the vulture. Oh, shit. Holy oh. shit. So, that means, look, we saw at the end of the last movie, he was in prison. Aunt May found out Peter was a Spider-Man. He did not tell Matt Gargan, who's the Scorpion, that he knows who Peter is. So at the end of this movie, you have half of the Sinister Six right there. You got the Mysterio, the Scorpion, and the Vulture. Uh, they're probably going to build to uh, the third movie having the full-on Sinister Six. What do you guys think? Who's, it, who's left? The rhino. Well, so well, it's a rotating. Yes, you uh, could do the rhino group. again. I think you could do the rhino because the Paul Giamatti rhino was whatever. People forget mm. him. So we have wait, who who we didn't need Craven. You could do Craven. See, and traditionally, like you, you could do ha- Hobgoblin. You yes, because you would have Green Goblin and Doctor Octopus. Now, can you do these guys again so soon? I don't know. No, I stay away from those. Guys. I'd rather them do new people. So you could do Hobgoblin, Craven the Hunter, and then who would be the sixth? Would be uh, Shocker. Oh, you have the Shocker, and you got the Tinkerer. There you go. You have your Sinister Six. Rugs, do you want to see the Sinister Six in the third Spider-Man movie? I think it would be cool if uh, we had the Sinister Six. It would be cool if, like, Spider-Man had somebody help him out. Like, maybe one of the Avengers or something come in and fucking help him out. Maybe not Iron Man, because then it'd be too too easy. Like, one of the lame-o guys, yeah. like... Yeah. Uh, like Hawkeye or, uh, or Ant-Man. Ant-Man or somebody. I think every movie you should have a cameo. Like you had the Iron Man in the first movie. Every movie you could put another guy in there to like help who, him out. Who, who really would be maybe Cap? I got one. Doctor Strange. Oh, Doctor Strange. Oh, Strange would be a great He's, pick. He'd be like, yeah. how do I fuck do I deal with this guy? Yeah, yeah. magic. Yeah. Yeah. This guy's magical. Yeah. Yeah, and Doctor Strange would be like, fucking, this is real magic, motherfucker. Yeah. Andy, do you think they should do the Sinister Six in the third movie as opposed to their own movie? As opposed to a Sinister Six. No, why would you do a Sinister Six want, movie Because they want, like, Sony's been wanting to do a Sinister Six movie for That's years. stupid. It is stupid. Like, don't just do it in Spider-Man. Yeah, do it in Spider-Man. It doesn't do need, it in the third one. It doesn't need its own movie. Also, but, uh, this yeah. movie, I'm, I'm kind of curious what they're, you know, what they're going to do. Are they going back to that school setting? Well, when does it take place? Because you remember Kevin Feige originally said Spider-Man 4 will be the first movie after Avengers 4 that's going to be, like, the return to normalcy for the MCU and for Peter. However, now having seen what they're setting up, he kind of had to say that, didn't he? He couldn't... Could this movie possibly happen before no. Avengers 4 and Infinity War? Well, we'll have to see what kind of uh, high drinks they pull with the Infinity Stones in the next one. Really. Because I, this didn't occur to me until uh, Wes Cranford posted on our Facebook group, I wouldn't be surprised if the movie ended with Peter getting on the school bus. Like, could this take place before these movies and it ends with him on the school bus or before before the end? I mean, that uh, uh, that could totally be possible. This whole thing could be a misdirect from Feige saying, you know, that this would is going to be... That would be a big be, mind fuck. That would be... Crazy. A big mind fuck up right there. What should we call it also? I don't, they're calling it like Spider Man Home, the sequel to Homecoming or Homecoming 2, which don't call it Homecoming 2. That can't be the name. No, there's no way. No way. Homecoming 2. What, what, I, I do like the, I do think that maybe they might do the school themes again. Like graduation day, Spider Man prom night, Spider Man midterms. Oh. Uh, midterms. Sp- Spider Man losing my virginity. Mid- midterms might be kind of <laughs> clever. Sp- Spider Man, the Sadie Hawkins dance. <laughs> what else? I haven't been to school in so long. I can't think of anyone's school. What know. about what about why can't we just go to like they did the amazing Spider-Man? Why not call it the spectacular Spider-Man? Could do that too. Would that work? They could. Uh we know he's gonna be international, uh that they're shooting all around the world. So I think I'm thinking it's like an international school field trip uh or something. Or and- you could do like just since Mr. you're working with Mysterio, you could just have him transport him to different locations. 
I'm not really familiar with Mysterio's powers, but well, that's well, the thing. He yeah. does. He's more like a. He doesn't really have real magic powers. Yeah. He has yeah. like misdirection. Illusions. He's yeah. an illusionist. It's kind of like the Prestige, or uh, I think it's gonna go more magic because you can't do like the VFX shit like they did originally. But it's an. He's an illusionist, and he just fucks with. Which is an, I like that it's another bad guy like that. Peter can't just punch to solve the you know the I'm problem. I'm thinking like, that maybe Michael Keaton or the Vulture gives him some kind of alien weaponry that allows him to do these illusions, like maybe a portal or something where he can like do crazy shit with the portal or something like that. Well, they have the tinkerer and they have uh, all that yeah. old tech. Speaking of Michael Keaton, did you hear the end of his commencement speech? He's got something to say. I have to share this because this either he was drunk or he's just this badass. No, he just, this is what he does. I've got one more thing to say and it'll only take me a second. I've got two words that I want you all to remember. They're very important. And if I leave you with anything, I'm going to leave you with these two words. And those two words are, I'm Batman. <laughs> That's so awesome. Geek boner. Ah, uh, you gotta love the Keaton. <laughs> I would uh, I would expect nothing less. I right? like I would want him to say I'm Batman at my convention. You better speech. fucking say I'm Batman before you leave, you bastard. Otherwise I spend all this money on the school for no reason. Speaking of I'm Batman, that's that that's foreshadowing for later. Yes, because uh, we'll get it. Well, the same joke is in the movie. It's yeah. in the movie. He does the joke. Uh, we'll yeah. get into that. Okay, let's move on to this next thing that actually we listener- did that joke by the way in our show. Like yeah, yes, a year, yeah, a year yes. ago, uh, it's a running gag. Anytime somebody says, "Who are you?" You say, "I'm Batman." Batman. You have to. That's the only answer you can get. Yeah, I'm Steve Rogers. I am Steve Rogers. I'm Groot. I'm Batman. Oh man, imagine if Groot and Batman met. They'd just be like, "I'm Batman." I am Groot. <laughs> uh, let's move on to this next bit of news that actually got me a little bit angry. Oh shit! This week, and I don't. You guys know me. I don't get angry. Oh, y'all talking about Thundercats? Oh, motherfucker. This this has, I have like no connection. I don't understand why. I All right, well, take a breather office. because it me. is. So uh, Cartoon Network is uh, putting a new Thundercats animated show on the air. It's going to be called Thundercats Roar. Yeah. Okay. The problem is. What's it, the problem? The problem is. The art style they have chosen to use. It's not even the art style. It's the context. That- well, the context is they're turning this what was an awesome. Like when I was a kid, Thundercats was your action badass show. Uh, you know, it had emotion. It had stakes. You would learn stuff. But it took itself seriously. It took the viewer seriously. So you felt awesome watching it. They are turning this into a comedy slapstick, like Three Stooges action comedy. What the fuck? Fuck. Who gave you the right? Why? First of all, the art style is like that Teen Titans Go bullshit that every kid loves these days. I don't understand why these comedy shows have taken over. Uh, wh- where are the action shows for the kids? And look, if you want to do a comedy in this style of animation, that's fine. How about you come up with something new instead of shitting on and desecrating Thundercats? I was happy to see the entire so internet. you don't like this at all? No. And I was so Me happy neither. to see the entire internet was like, what the fuck is Me this neither. garbage? Like, look, there's a, there's a school of thought that why can't this why can't we do this well at, at a certain point in time when you change something enough it ceases to be the thing that you have so it's like i don't know i guess i don't know it's just like if you take anything and you put something else too much of something else in it Godzilla it, 98 yeah <laughs> there you it go. becomes something else and it, it's it, it becomes thundercats in name only so yes um Another thing is that the diversity of art styles on the Cartoon Network is now getting more and more to this. Everything's looking like this. Star versus the forces of evil. Uh, Gravity Falls. Gumball. Like, um, like uh, the, the Steven Universe. Is like they all, there's actually an illustration that shows all of the faces from all these characters have the exact same face. It's all the same shit, and I don't understand. So Look. it's like you're losing that diversity of yes. of difference and shows. So like now everything's being and I hate Teen Titans Go. I I I think it's an abomination. And I don't I, understand because, why kids are into this because like t- if you ever read the Teen Titans comic book and then you watch Teen Titans Go, there's there there's nothing but the names of the characters and the yes. costumes, and yes. that's it. Like there's nothing alike. There's no. Oh, I just fucked oh, up. Oh shit! You all right there, Rux? Yeah, I, I was waving my arms and then. <laughs> oh no! I knocked over everything. But I'm just saying that, like, pretty much there is nothing uh, recognizable from Teen Titans, other than like some 
basic like callbacks to to things that happen in comics. They're not like actually like I don't know. People say, "Oh, it's a bridge show. It connects you to the next level." So a little kid will like it, and then but Scooby Doo has been fundamentally the same, right? They yeah. solve yeah. mysteries. Yeah, maybe they add a little bit more action or a little bit, but. They had a there is a Scooby Doo that changed the animation style uh, uh, really drastically and like nobody likes that one, so it's like I don't understand like people don't like if you change it enough it's not what it is anymore like oh, and, Mumra I, should not be reading a newspaper. I, I just got to call out <laughs> no, Ron though. Yeah. He goes, I don't understand why kids like this. I mean, referring to Teen Titans Go. Yeah. Um, uh, when you're a kid, Imran. Yeah. You stick fucking toys in your mouth. Well, it, look, your brain does. It doesn't really. It does. It's yeah, not but, the same as, so as an adult. Are these kids even dumber than we were when we were kids? Because look, there is a, a place. Like anything. There, well, look, it, it has to come down with this style of art. There is a why place. Kids, why wait? Why are you stupid if you if you're a kid and you like this? Because the the show is condescending. Like what age but range how is the this? Kid, the kid doesn't even know what condescending but means. This, this is the point, Anthony. It's like when I was a kid. I watched Thundercats. Yes, Thundercats right. was right. for It kids wasn't a show made was. for adults. It was a show made for kids. So now we're taking kids and we're infantilizing them, making them even more babyish because they can't handle a show that has like heroic figures doing heroic things and with maybe swords some loss anymore. And some violence and shit. God no, forbid. I, the the problem. I don't know if that's the problem. I think the problem is is adults are think are trying to figure out what kids like. Yeah. When it, Adults don't know what kids like because they're not adult. They're not kids. They're adults. But it doesn't matter. The point is, is that they're going to gravitate towards what they gravitate to. So right. Thundercats is on TV. Maybe they'll watch it, you know, but if you put Thundercats on TV and you change it to be whatever everybody, else, all these other kids are already liking, you're not, first of all, you're not challenging the kids at all. Yeah. And number two is that you're taking something that already exists and has a, f- a fan base and you're alienating those people. So... Oh, I'm not defending this. I'm just calling yeah. out Imran's. I don't understand why kids like this. No, kids like whatever you put in front of them. So right. th- that means put something in front of them that they don't already already like are programmed to like. Like, like I think like Disney and all this stuff. They have formulas. It's so formulaic. Everything they do. Look, we'll always have the original Thundercats. We'll always have the 2011 series. Is what? It's one season. It's fucking amazing. That's the way you they update got rid of Thundercats. That they couldn't sell toys. This look and all, I just the issue I have with this style of art is there is a place for this art style. Absolutely, but it used to be for very small children, for toddlers. Like, are they pitching this to now eight well, year olds? You want to know where I it's saw weird. this becoming pervasive? Is like, yeah. okay, Scott Pilgrim's been around for a very long time, right? And I know that Scott uh, Brian Lee O'Malley, the guy who invented Scott Pilgrim, it kind of took a bunch of different influences from video games and anime and stuff like that. And yeah, and manga, kind of, obviously and yeah. kind of like streamlined it and made it yeah. like cool. Then all of these cartoons like star versus the forces of evil and, I, all these and uh, Powerpuff started, girls started that they, style. They too. started, no, but uh, Scott Pilgrim was way more sophisticated. Like yeah. Scott Pilgrim. If you look at the artwork in that, like the attention to detail, even though they have big eyes and, and, and the proportions are, are cool. Then, then they started dumbing it down and and dumbing it more and more down as you and then they get you eventually get to Steven Universe, so um, where they've completely like simplified it. Well, that was just like tribute to manga. It was like oh, he made like an American manga. Yeah, you know, in that style. But look, I, it just why are you gonna use the Thundercats? Just make up new fucking characters if you want to do some shit like this. Leave the Thundercats alone. All right, enough of that. <laughs> the only thing that I'm worried worried about yeah. is that the, there's an argument that say like. You know, this doesn't diminish from Thundercats. There was always going to be Thundercats. Right. And they'll always be it. But that's not how it really works. You're being fucking completely a bullshit artist when you say that because, like, nobody, like, so we think of Christopher Reeves as Superman, right? Right. But any kid who grew up now is not going to think of Christopher Reeves as Superman unless Correct. their parents make them watch it. They're going to think of whoever Superman is in the DC movies that suck. Like Look, part they, of it really been, is they are they are being replaced. Just don't fuck with they, my they, childhood. They will, it will be replaced unless it like has like a a two month run. Yeah, and it, everyone hates it so much that it doesn't get yeah or cancel or it gets canceled because whatever, especially now this generation, whatever kids watch right now is what is going to be their reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, look, just don't fuck with my childhood. All right, that's all it is. Yeah, they're fucking like, with my childhood. I hate it's it when not they replacing do replacing it. It's just blah blah blah. Dude, I'm like, no, dude, just, if you're, just, but make something new. How about you come up with something new if you want to do? That's this. the thing that sticks in my craw about Teen Titans is because they're like, oh, it's not replacing, but every kid growing up thinks yeah. that that's the Teen yeah. Titans now, right? Yeah, that's that, and then they think it should be like a slapstick threes company. And then when they go and read thing, the comics, like and they see that there's like it's, it's fucking Dick Grayson fucking everybody. <laughs> and it's yeah. not Teen Titans. <laughs> Yeah, and Batwoman's like a lesbian. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all right, let's talk about some Godzilla shit, right? You guys like the Godzilla. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Toho is uh, planning their own shared universe for future Godzilla films. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, but they have talked about what their... So their deal with Warner Brothers and Legendary comes to a close after 2021. Right. Uh, Toko, Tojo Keji spoke about what the plans are afterwards. He said, after 2021, we're thinking of a potential strategy that releases Godzilla movies uninterrupted at a rate of every two years, although there is a preference for a yearly pace as well. The future of the series and its forwarding developments are very conscious of the method of shared universe. They Godzilla. gotta do yearly. They gotta do yearly. Yearly? Things. Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, etc. All could I share. I mean, they used to do it. Well, they did create a shared universe back in the 60s, yeah. All that stuff is part of the, the same universe. They were the first fucking thing to do a shared universe. Yeah. Them and the, uni- I mean, you got the Universal Monsters yeah. and then you yeah. had uh, uh, Toho. Yeah. They, yeah, back in the 60s. Yeah. Very, it was very true. They did Godzilla, they had Mothra, King uh, Rodan, uh, War of the Gargantuans, all those, Veron, all those fucking movies. I, I, you know, they should just start ramping it up and uh, I would love to see different monsters every year. It'd be fucking so, great. But you know, if they go with the in the route of Shin Godzilla, well, and make them that super serious, yeah, and that, like just out of a depart that much of a departure from the fun, I'm not gonna like. Well, this. good news, Anthony. Yes, yeah. Uh, if you are a fan of Shin Godzilla, they are not gonna be moving forward with okay, Shin cool. Godzilla Thank two. God. They, not, they or no no Shin Godzilla two. Nope. No, that got oh. torched. Yeah. Good. Yep. 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 Because I, this is my theory. All right, and I might be wrong. I usually am. But um, they're going to piggyback off of Legendary's either failure or <laughs> and you're going to see them either pivot. If, if le- the Legendary Godzillas are both huge successes, like the King Kong versus Godzilla, I think that the word they're going to do is they're going to try and incorporate some of that Legendary design like into their Godzilla. Okay. I think are we already kind of seeing that in the cartoon? Yeah, a little on, bit. On a Netflix little bit. But I think they're going to yeah. go back. They're going to try and find a balance between traditional high sci a you know like or like that that quintessential godzilla and maybe just a little bit of that legendary to bridge the gap mm-hmm. and i think that's going to be the new the new look and the new direction they're going to go they're going to go as they might go man in suit but they they might go computer i don't know like i don't know how it's going to turn out but it's gonna my, be my problem with shin's design among many other things but is Unless you zoomed in on the face and they did the face facial uh, features, yeah, yeah. Or he was roaring in that. Yeah. Like when he's walking in the distance, he just seems too much like a Frankenstein. You, it's expressionless. It, it's just expressionless, mm-hmm. and it's just like a walking thing. But when he's fucking shooting those purple lasers when he's and lighting out it up, the lasers and shit, it's amazing. Roaring, it, yeah. there is some. More, there is more expression there. I'll give him and that. His jaw opens up. Not uh, a fan of the design at all. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, you know, it doesn't it ended, lend itself to. Ha- a lot of action. No, th- there's no way that's going to be laser beam fest. Fight. Right. Yeah. I know a lot of Shin Godzilla fans who are going to be upset, who are really into this and wanted to see this continue, but it didn't I'm end with I'm fucking excited about this. No, Man, I, the, the guy done. we work with loves Shin Yes, Godzilla. that's who I was uh, thinking of. He's oh going to well. be sad. You know, and it ended with a weird, the thing is made up of a bunch of things and there's people crawling on his tail. It was really Too disturbing. Wow. Yeah. But back to Legendary, the sequel to Godzilla uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters has been pushed back two months. It was going to come out March 22nd, 2019. It will now come out May 31st. Is that because of Infinity War or whatever? Uh, no, they had some shifting of $6 billion man and some other thing that I think is that Wahlberg's in $6 billion man. I don't know. They moved one. Somebody moved the date and they moved it around. I don't know. But that is after Infinity War. Yeah. What is that coming out? May 31st. When is Infinity War? Yeah, that's after Infinity War. May May, May is May, early May, the first weekend of May. Okay. And if they're smart, they'll do the same thing where they put it in late April. Mm. And and they'll, oh, they'll move that one up too. Yeah, because it worked. Godzilla 2 is May 31st. May 31st now. Yeah, them moving up Infinity War really worked for them uh, really Hmm. well. 
Uh, so we got a year, and we will get the sequel to the legendary Godzilla, Godzilla two. Yeah, I got, that's gonna take a lot of money. Infinity War is out. I'm now. I'm worried about that. <laughs> Godzilla two's got a ton of monsters Why would too. They move it? it. Why would they move it? They should move it always ahead, like a couple weeks. Yeah, ahead. you gotta get ahead. I think they're looking I mean, for look, a nice they opening. They need two for weeks. It. They need two weeks clean of Infinite in Infinity War at least. Three weeks at least to be, make any money. I mean, if it's anything like this year, good luck trying to make money after Infinity War. Yeah, they're gonna, Godzilla, yeah, I, like I have a. Uh, I mean, I've say I love this character. Like, I want this movie to make a ton of money, right? even if it kind of sucks, right? Because I, yeah. I want to see Godzilla movies sure. keep being made. Sure, and every year a yearly schedule would be great. They could easily build well, to an keep awesome the interest universe. up. You need they do it every year. Yeah, yeah. Like a piece of the puzzle every year. Yeah. If if one movie is really good, people will come back for the for the other things, even if Godzilla's not in them. And then he just hinted at it or something. Here, here's a question for you, Rugs. Do you think the American audience? So let's say Godzilla two is good done, depending on the the way people react to it. You think the American audience would watch spin off Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, King Ghidorah films? It all depends on how Legendary handles it. Yeah. If they manage to make like something like I, I personally. And this is going to shock a lot of people. I don't like Mothra. I'm not oh, a Mothra shit. fan. Not a Mothra. Guy. No. You don't like not the giant moth. I don't really like flying things because they're. Is ne- it because the way Toho handles flying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like, kind it's of just, floating like, slowly yeah, the, through the yeah. air. I mean, if it's if if legendary, I mean, from what I saw from the Mutos, the le- the flying Muto was actually cool. He was like dive bombing yeah, him, and yeah. and he was getting in there. And he was hook hooking him around the mouth. That's cool shit. So like. You could make Moth for cool. If so, they give all these monsters a per, like a clear personality, like I would check out the spinoff movies. They just need to have some kind of personality. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know how how um, Toho is going to really. I was going to call it Ho Ho. Ho I don't know. How, I don't know. How, I'm, I'm hungry. Uh, I don't know how uh, Toho is going to handle like if they're going to do CG or practical. I don't know what they're going to which way they're going to go. And it clearly from Shin Godzilla, you'll know that they're. Their computer shit is not up to par, really. Like the they, Shin was mostly CG. Yeah, though it's completely sh- CG. But they, they, I think they kept the motion to a minimum. Bad. It didn't they, look that bad. Yeah. I think that yeah, because they didn't make him move. Right, right. There was one scene where he kind of moved a little yeah. bit, and you could see that it's not up to par. Like he had big fat turkey legs, Felix. <laughs> also, <laughs> big fat bottom. He had some junk the in his The only thing that moved good was that little, the guy in the beginning. He yeah, when he great. was a little wormy uh, yeah. his, to his mutations. All right, look, I got two more things before we take a break. Uh, well, we have to comment on this Red Band trailer for this movie called The Happy Time Murders. Why? Because we have a, a felty American on the show, yeah. Red Boy, and this is a, the an R-rated sex puppet movie? Oh, shit. From, not, I was not contacted. I'm some, Rugs, why didn't you go out for the casting of this movie? I was not even aware of it. Right. Well, hatred. apparently, the, so this is from Brian Henson, Jim Henson's son, who's done a couple of Muppet movies. Uh, apparently, he's been trying to do this movie for like 10 years. Uh, and he just, so this is legit from the Muppet blood pool, gene pool. Uh, it's uh, Never got into the Muppets. Oh, my God. I, lo- I love the Muppets, but this, this is like felty porn and R-rated raunchy Muppets. Uh, the only thing Ruggs doesn't approve of is what, Ruggs? No, I, I approve this movie, but... I, I just it's want boy approved. Yeah, I do. I approve it. But like, I also think that, you know, I want to be in, if I was an actor, I would want to be in a movie where I'm not just used for comedic effect. All right. I would want to be a serious actor. I want to be a superhero. Damn it. You want to be the it is Run boy approved. But we should have a felty superhero movie. Yes. Like, like Super Grover. Remember Super Grover? No, that's he a was... joke, too. I'm talking about like, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, everybody's inclusive now. We're including everybody. <laughs> I would like to be represented as a superhero. I I, I agree. I think we need uh, super a serious rugs. superhero. Anthony, have you seen this trailer? No. Are you watching it? You're not watching no, it? No, I didn't oh, even dude. know there was a trailer. I'm there's, sorry. So there's a trailer for Happy Time Murders, and uh, it's great because there's a puppet going, for 50 cents, I'll suck your dick. <laughs> and it's just really disturbing. This is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> no. Um, when I was a, a young man, there oh. was a movie called Meet the Feebles. That's right. And it was a very... Perverted. You were going to talk deviant. about sucking dick. Yeah, well, yeah. that made, that was the other story. Very <laughs> well, deviant puppet movie, Meet the Feebles, yes. Well, they had a song called Sodomy. <laughs> you should play a little clip of that. <laughs> uh, there's uh, puppet prostitutes in this, and she's like, hey, baby, you, you into some rotten cotton? 
It's pretty fun. And then at the end, the guy's banging. There's two puppets banging, and he has silly string for jizz. He is shooting silly string. So this is affiliated with the Muppets? This is from Brian Henson, Jim Henson's fucking son. Is it official Henson? In the same universe? I I, I guess. No. This is like what? I mean, uh, seeing Muppets with legs, like full full shot is really weird. I've seen this now. It's like what happens when the Muppets aren't uh, in the spotlight. But I felt like we come up with that silly string jizz joke on this podcast earlier, too. I feel like we came up with all this. Yeah, and we, they just we always it. do everything before everybody. They just fucking stole it. But I'll go watch it. I like. I don't mind Melissa McCarthy. She's funny. I yeah, think she's funny. I mean, I was. You know, I'm not a. I'm not into Melissa McCarthy, but I'll. You know, it, it's a fucking movie full of puppets. <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> What's not to like? Indeed. Okay. Last thing is uh, some. Uh, we're gonna end with some weird shit from the internet. It's another thing that makes me go. Who gave you the right? Uh, there is a petition. On change.org with 26,000 signatures to change the word no to yesn't. Yeah, the thing uh, is, what oh the no. fuck? Has and hasn't. <laughs> or should and does, should not. Yeah, does and doesn't. Yeah. So why isn't yesn't? It should be yes. It's contraction for yes, <laughs> not. What the fuck is happening to us? To yes, people. Not. Holy shit. Yeah, yes. Not. How would you use this in a sentence, Rugs? I don't know. You have to be a millennial and an asshole. So if I'm like, hey, you want to do something tonight? You got to go, yes and? It's like, yes, maybe no. Yes and no, maybe yes. I think it's funny because you can fake someone out. Like, (laughs) you want to blow me? Yes Yes and. It's the most passive aggressive way. As soon as you hear the yeah, you're like, all right. Then you hear the, you know, the and. Yeah, Anthony, are the kids saying yes? Is this the thing out in the in the, the EDM circle? I did not hear this no? one time. No, I'm yeah. happy to say report that I did not hear yes in one time. <laughs> Fucking at, uh, yes at the ED uh, at the EDC. We need to come up with our own word that I we do can have, get. Uh, one thing to report though from yeah. DC that yeah. was uh, quite disturbing. Yeah. So DJs usually bring out different uh, guests for let's per, per se. Yeah. I saw Aloe Black was brought out for a couple songs. I saw Nick Jonas. Ty Dolla Sign, Lil John, even saw Kenny G was brought out during one of the song, one of the sets. But one of my favorite groups, Yellow Claw. Yeah. They're like, we got the really special guest here today. We have give it up for Bad Baby. Oh no, I and had you, a. You know who Bad Baby oh, is? Oh, the oh, Catch Me Outside yes. girl. Can you explain this bullshit? Oh my God. So she's Dana a girl. Bergoli. Dana Bergoli, Catch Me Outside. How about that? She is on tour right now, doing. Uh, she apparently does music. Dude, she's a, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, she, they had her do two songs, and I ha- I'm happy to report once again though that the crowd at EDC was did they boo very, her? Tell me, they very, her. very uh, not pleased, Good. booing. I would say with this and saying get this shit off the stage. Good. So, but I, I don't know. I, I thought that was a. I thought that was. That's a kind miss. of a big win for you guys. That you yeah, guys I was very happy knew, to hear. Like, to I was like, like say fuck you to this person. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like. Even we have standards. So like, this it, is this is why I was uh, uh, just I was like, what the fuck is going on? Daniel Bergoli's guy. She had a nomination for a best female rap artist at the okay, Billboard but, Music Awards against Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Okay, now the Billboard Music Awards is now officially. It's t- not. It's not. You are done. Listen, the you bar are is so low for rap right now in your generation that this fucking piece of shit this can fucking, get nominated. Uh, and and sh- I hate the way she spells the name. It's B H B H A D B H A B I E. It's so fucking annoying. Bad baby. This is the. I can't believe that she's a thing and she's on tour. Look, Cardi B was low enough, and now we're going even lower with Dana Bergoli. Who is paying to see her rap? Where are these people? She's on tour right now. You I can see her in Chicago. That it's gonna oh, be, fuck. She's going to have fans. This, give her <laughs> she, time. Really, she has fans. Yeah. How dare you do this to us? This is very distressing Look, news, listener. This isn't anything new. There's been garbage being popular for years. Yes, it's just new. never yes, been. Yes, there is. Yes. <laughs> Look, it's just never been this fucking like whenever something that was shitty was popular because we, we were all in on the joke. You know what I mean? Like Millie Vanilli, like yeah. we figured it yeah. out. Yeah, you but know, they were, they were good. Whoever sang those songs was actually good. <laughs> just to, they, this, they were good. The, I mean, those guys. The whoever people, actually sang it was fucking. Yeah. Good. Just this is the day and age where you can go from a Jerry Springer fucking guest to touring and being nominated for best hey, pop hey, artist. Not Jerry Springer. You was fuck. it Maury? Dr. Phil. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Is he legit, though, Dr. Phil? I don't know. I don't know. Fuck bad baby. Jesus Christ. Straighten up. People, listen to some new music. She was bad. Uh, we're going to take a Kenny quick- Kenny G, though, was great. <laughs> I can't believe great, Kenny great G guess. came to an EDM concert. He Yeah. They, uh, this DJ OK has a song called, uh, I forget what it's called, but it has a, a 
big saxophone part, and he came out and did the saxophone Shit, that is so smart really cool. for Kenny G. Way to stay relevant, uh, Yeah, it was dude. really cool. That's fucking good move. <laughs> right yeah. on. All right, we're going to take a quick break, play All some right. promos. We're going to come back with our spoiler review of Deadpool right after this. Woo! After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, this is Victoria, your dog guru, and I want to answer all of your canine conundrums. From your puppy questions to your daring dog disasters. I am here to help you restore peace in your home. In every single episode of Ask Your Dog Guru, we will answer questions from listeners, we'll offer training tips and tricks, and we'll give you advice on all things dog. Not to mention we have some pretty cool guests. Ask Your Dog Guru can be found on all your favorite podcast apps, iTunes, and of course on Blazing Caribou Studios. So go fetch Fido, grab a warm seat on the couch, and listen to Ask Your Dog Guru. Namaste. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get you back to your podcasty goodness now in a minute. First, we'd like to take a second to tell you about our marginally better podcast, the 365 Flex Podcast. I am the Scottish Whedon Whore Chris. And I am the Pissy X Video Store Clerk, Kev. And we bring you the latest movie and TV news, reviews and rants. All that and a bunch of top fives that you really will not care about. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Libsyn and all other third party podcasting apps and on top of all that you'll get free access to our indie talk you'll hear us speaking with directors producers actors comic book creators and artists about their experiences don't forget to drop us five stars and follow us on the facebooks and the twitters told them not to go in the water hello this is Storycrafter mike from the steamrollers adventure podcast and you're listening to the, the jack and nerd podcast hey michael between the two of us I think I am the Jack. You're actually more like Rug Boy. Nope, I am Totes the Jack. Okay, then who are the Pittsburgh Steelers? A marauding band of aliens who use giant laser cutters to carve off a slice of Pennsylvania to take back to their home world. Hey, Rug Boy, if you ever want to come moonlight on our show, we just had an opening. What? Doc, 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 and her. Hey, listener. Thanks for joining us every week and downloading, streaming, pressing play. We really appreciate it. If you love the show, you want more show, join our fan club. Jockinner.com slash Patreon is where you will find uh, our fan club. And you, uh, for a monthly support pledge to the show, help us keep the lights on, you will get a bunch of awesome extra stuff. You get a bonus podcast feed and an exclusive RSS feed with bonus content, instant reactions to movies like you, you would have heard. Mine. Yeah, you got mine. And uh, and Anthony's Rug Boy didn't uh, send his, but that's okay because now I'm dying to know what he really thought of the movie. I have no idea what he thinks. Uh, but I got to say shout out to our newest member of the fan club. Shout out to Jason TJ Johnson and Big Haas from the Voice from the Underground podcast for their one hundred dollar pledge. Oh shit! Did we talk about this last week? No, this comment. Th- no, did this, I read? Where did we read this? This happened this week, like oh. early. You probably saw it on the Facebook he group. He has lost all concept oh. of space you, and time. Yeah, yes, I have. Yes, this I EDM so is still running through him. He's still the Mollies. I was still closing my eyes yeah. on the plane, yeah. and I would hear like beat drops. Oh no! And then I would have people talking to me, and yeah. I'd look over, and the guy is asleep. I'm like, what the fuck is going on oh you're hallucinating yeah. jesus fuck no here's what happened they love the show he's gonna start with one month at a hundred dollars so we get for the they give us a hundred dollars donation and wow. then they're gonna kick it down to a reasonable couple bucks a month i don't expect yeah, them to stay reasonable for you yes. guys whatever you guys can afford we only want to bankrupt john seaford everyone else you whatever yeah. you can afford but john seaford's I, crazy as fuck he's we crazy as fuck and uh we love him we love him to death uh but i posted thank you and jason uh, Mumar wrote back, uh, Imran introduced me to cast, which saves me $20 a month and three hours of editing per show. Plus, they promote the fuck out of us for some reason. But mostly, we love the show. That's the most important thing. Jock and Nerd is high-quality content from guys who actually give a shit, not only about comics, but about each individual listener, every single listener. That's exceedingly rare and worthy of support. That's why I believe in the show. Our world is divided. Our government and social environment is whacked out beyond belief. Jock and Nerd is a grain of fun and stability among the insanity, keep up the good work, guys. Can't wait to have you back on Voice from the Underground. Nerd. Holy shit, we can't thank you enough. God damn. Why did you yeah, go thanks, into guys. Batman? In the, in no, I was, the- I was kind of going into like Alex Jones. I wanted to do oh. Alex Jones. Oh, okay. Our Jeez, government guys, is thank social. You. Yeah. Thank Un- you. I, unbelievable. Usually I usually bash the people that 
Right? Give us money. <laughs> but jeez. Like, holy fuck, man. Thanks. So generous. We love it. Y'all are getting stickers. Everybody's going to get stickers. The stickers are still coming. The stickers uh, suck. Uh, no, I no, don't I'm think sorry. so. People like think, the stickers. I people like the stickers. People like the stickers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get to Deadpool 2. Here is your spoiler alert. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. Ah, the long-awaited sequel to 2016's uh, Deadpool 1, directed by David Leach of John Wick fame. This was the movie that Tim Miller walked away from early in production. It wasn't like a solo situation where he got fired while he was shooting the movie. They, they were having differences, and they walked away. David Leach from John Wick steps in, written by the same writers as the first movie, Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick and Ryan Reynolds. And, of course, based on uh, Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nechezza's creation, Deadpool, from Marvel, Rotten Tomato score for this movie, currently sitting at 82%. 7.1 out of 10 on the average rating. Uh, and as far as box office, here's where it gets interesting, because people were anticipating this movie was going to make like 130 to $150 million. The first movie, you know, holds the record for highest R-rated opening at 132 million. And I think we all thought, hey, yeah, it could easily beat that. Well, turns out it opens to 125 million domestically. Oh, shit. 301 worldwide. Still a lot of money for an R-rated movie. It's the second best R-rated opening behind the original Deadpool, which so, so what does uh, that tell you? Well, a lot of people are like, does this mean it's superhero fatigue and people, I don't, I don't think so. This is still put, you find me an R8 movie that makes $125 million opening weekend. I heard someone made the case that it was a Valentine's Day thing. So I, they, yes, they, I a think lot there of people was brought a, their girlfriends. Yes. I think there was a number of things. The first one. Yes. The first one, yeah. In 2016, not only was it in Valentine's Day, it was the first movie of the year. It was opening up the superhero genre. It didn't really have any competition. This year, look, Marvel has put out two movies that have already netted them three fucking billion dollars. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you got that going for you. And I even heard that the royal wedding, some were saying the royal wedding really hurt the opening weekend's gross. People wanted to watch, for some fucking reason, watch the royal wedding. They want to go out to the movies. I don't think it's a huge disappointment or a failure. It's still a great opening weekend. But Solo comes out next week, this now, week. Now, it has one week until Solo so comes out. So it's going to not make it nowhere near as much money as it did the first time. Uh, but combined, these movies, the first movie made like $700 million, uh overall. This this is a billion-dollar franchise now, Deadpool yeah. for Fox. A billion? Yeah, $300 yeah, a year, it, $700 million, in two movies. It's going to split its, li its well, lifetime that, in the it, theater right, domestically. How... Look, right, that's not how a billion. It's not a billion it dollar is. franchise. Why not? Deadpool one made seven hundred million dollars no, overall. It has to make a billion in its one movie to the, be a billion the dollar franchise. But the franchise okay. consists of two movies. Okay, fine, but it's not. It's not a consist. You're okay, fine. You said it correct. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, what do but you think? I mean, it's it's spin though. The way you're saying it's it. a little bit. The of franchise spin. made a billion. The franchise combined, made yes. That's what I but said. It's not a billion dollar. Like it, it's not like Avengers where you release one movie and, and come, okay, movie, one okay. movie is going to make a billion you. dollars. Well, what do you think of these uh, these numbers here, Anthony? Uh, about what you expected, or uh, should they have made more? Shit, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it. I thought it would have beat the first Deadpool, right? But, I mean, it's still a pretty solid opening. It's very especially solid, especially for an R rating, yeah. and especially considering the competition and it being now summer. Um, but the, I think it's solid. that's the thing. Like, isn't it weird that like a movie that was so loved got so much great word of mouth didn't bring people back to the theaters? Mm, interesting. In, the, in 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 larger numbers, is it fatigue? Usually I mean, you do see larger numbers, so that is a little interesting. This is not the first movie of superhero movie of the year. We've been given two fucking huge movies already. Is that a part of it? Possibly. I don't know. But I, don't know. Yeah, I think that might have something to do. I with thought it. it was refreshing after, you know, uh, Infinity War. It was War. refreshing. Yeah. So, look, let's do our opening thoughts. And like I said, I, I know what Anthony thought because I heard his his uh, Patreon instant reactions. I have no idea what Rugboy thinks. Rugs, I'm going to start with you. Give us your opening thoughts walking out of this movie. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. I thought that the action was great. I like the way this guy directs movie, Leech, uh, he, he's great in John Wick. He did great in Atomic Blonde. And, um, yeah, his action is pretty rock solid throughout this whole movie. Absolutely. Um, it feels like a small movie, but they clearly invested a lot more money into this. Um, their yeah, things... budget is $110 million this time around. Last time yeah. it was like 70 yeah. I think Domino was really cool. The only thing that threw me off this movie was that the fact that she had hairy armpits. 
She did. She did. did she? I yeah. didn't know. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice. That. I, I wasn't and looking. Once I noticed it, I couldn't stop looking at it. It, it could distract. Really? Not that I, I give a shit if people have hairy armpits. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, but like, it's just like it's not something you see every. I time wasn't expecting movie. it in like a big budget movie. You know, I did not notice that. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that threw me off. <laughs> okay. Because for some reason, you know what happens? Like when I see someone dressed in leather with hairy armpits, it makes me think of like Kiss. Or something, you know, okay. like I, I, I could see automatically that. was like, okay, sure. that's Gene Simmons <laughs> and like <laughs> it took me out of talk. Domino. So uh, it, it was something that distracted me. Well, that's unfortunate movie. that you noticed the armpits, but, I guess. But, OK, let me get off. That. <laughs> but like otherwise, uh, I think that Josh Brolin did a good job yeah. uh, as Cable, even though when he stood next to Deadpool and it was and he was towering over him. Well, he does make a joke about that. Yeah, it's <laughs> Which is great. It, it, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I always expect him to be bigger. So like it. It is a kind of a weird. He's like five eleven, not like in the comics. Yeah, <laughs> fucking calls him out. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of meta humor. I don't know if it's too much meta humor, but yeah. there's a lot. Okay. I mean, almost every joke is meta. Yes. All right, uh, Anthony, you also saw it recently after your yep. Vegas uh, sobering up yesterday. Well, we, we're recording this on Thursday, May twenty fourth. So I saw so, it yesterday. What uh, What do you think walking out of the movie? I gotta say, first off, I was so fucking tired during the movie. I almost fell asleep <laughs> oh, twice. Shit. Oh no! So oh, like, shit. Uh, it was rough. It was kind of middle. a chore, not because of the movie. It right. was just mm. so dark, mm. and so mm. I was like, "Oh my god, I might fall asleep." I was just chugging coke the entire movie, not cocaine. You're supposed to snort it, not drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how wet you. I guess that's how it works. Yes, yeah. yeah. You're shove it in your mask underneath my mask spat. and just pat my I'm face. I'm gonna do something really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> um. I thought it was good. I thought it was another. I mean, it's if you like Deadpool one, this is kind of more of the same. Yeah. Even like you, Rug Boys, I appreciated all the meta jokes, uh, but that's because it's kind of aimed at someone like me that understands all that. Deadpool's not my personal favorite character, um, and this movie kind of again proved that for me. Just because everything's a quip, everything's a joke, everything like nothing. There isn't much time to be serious at all. So it's a fun movie to watch, you know, one time. But there's not. It's not a lot there yeah. in terms of substance, in terms of bigger things. I, I kind of want more for my superhero films than that, but it's different and it's it's not trying to be anything like unlike anything else. So I can appreciate that. And they and they nail the Deadpool character perfectly. Deadpool can be pretty fucking annoying if you take it too far one way, and he can be if you make it too serious, then it's not Deadpool at all. So I think they have the perfect medium for the Deadpool fans out there. I like Domino. I liked Cable. I liked that uh, you hit that spoiler thing, right? Uh, I'm out of it. Spoiler alert. There Just for you again. Even Thank though you, you were sitting there when I hit it the I first I appreciate yeah. that. I'm not all here. Uh, we understand. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Um, I enjoyed that the fact that they finally got the, kind of got the juggernaut right. Uh, okay. Yeah. I liked it, his, this take better than the, the take we got in uh, X-Men. Whatever the anything fuck that was. Better anything, yeah. Anything. Uh, you know who so. I am. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. Better yeah. than Vinnie Jones. He, Vinnie he, Jones' yeah. Juggernaut was not what I wanted. This is a better Juggernaut. Well, you need a CG. He's got to be CGI. He's got to be huge. Enjoy the can. Like the, I, I enjoyed most most of it. I enjoyed mo- mostly everything. I mean, there's not really even a villain in this, and I kind of enjoyed it. And barely a plot, really. Think about it. Uh, no, no, there's a plot. I mean, so it's, much, it's just the plot from the Terminator, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, the, it's, <laughs> it's the. It's the. I mean, it's the plot of one guy's got to kill somebody. Yeah, exactly. And the other one's trying to save the kid. Yeah, I mean, it's a good enough plot. I mean, Cable's kind of a serious character. I liked Brolin. I thought it was a good enough plot to get these two characters. Yeah, and to get the, get the story moving. Yeah, it just needs to be very straightforward. Yeah, I mean, at the end, and I was, uh, I had a great time. I did. I thought the action was amazing. I loved all the action choreo- choreography, the hand to hand stuff that David David Leach handles very well. Uh, some great big laughs. Some hard, how great, and I did love all. The, the fucking references uh uh the, and so many references uh but uh oh and it was i had a lot of fun overall though i did find i didn't think i laughed as hard as i did in the first movie um because you're and, expecting it now yeah because it's not uh, the first one was so different and so fresh like you'd never seen that uh so this one gave you more of the same and they tried to make it bigger and uh, uh some of it worked some of it didn't there was a lot of jokes I feel like at times they went quantity over quality not all the jokes were great where I felt like the jokes in the first movie were a little more well, clever I also think a lot of them didn't have payoffs like there were setups right. but not pay there Yeah were, it was just like, like- Deadpool puts the coke under his mask and slaps him, and then it just cuts to another scene. Like I would have liked to see him do some crazy ass shit after that, like talk a lot and like whatever, you know. But on the other hand, then there was jokes that they dragged out that didn't need to be dragged yeah. out, you know. And the death well, scene, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, well, I mean, and that was kind of funny. So I'm torn because 
I liked that it, it had that emotional connection, but I also felt like it wanted, it reminded me of like a, a naked gun or an airplane or like a scary movie. Like it really just wanted to be like a full MacGruber spoof. Like it could work that way as well. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it felt like it fought when it got serious. Like it was almost like a whole different movie and then it would just be fucking, but the violence, there was one scene in particular that made it, it was so out there yeah. that you thought it was like a, a scary movie. Or like a, a yes. airplane or MacGruber. What scene would you say that was? The X Force scene. Okay, so let's talk about some of our biggest laughs because to me, that whole X Force jumping out of the helicopter was probably one of the funniest things in the whole fucking movie for me. Right. That's I laughed. I enjoyed the it because I did not expect it. Right? Yes. They, you know, they. But that's shit. something that they would do in a Naked Gun movie. Yeah. Exactly. But they would also do in a Deadpool, which it kind of fits the tone. Yeah. But they showed us tra- in the trailer. You see, they shot stuff just like Infinity War. They shot Bedlam fighting and Shatterstar fighting and uh, and. And fucking Peter and the the flip of this was uh, was amazing. It was hilarious. I was like, "Holy shit, ball. <laughs> So well done, so funny. Uh, and the fact that at the very end he only saves Peter. Well, you got that, and then you also have the Vanisher who ends up being Brad Pitt. Yes, huh? what a great geek moment. What a great cameo that is. And it was actually a guy being it there. Was actually you, someone you being never there, knew. Yeah. You're like, is that just? But the thing, the the empty parachute jumped off by itself, anyways. Uh, that was a uh, that was that was a it was a great gag. It's a such a great that. idea. I, I, I audibly laughed during that, but like yeah. I was like, wow, this is really like because it was so like incredibly over the edge. It was like they're going crazy, like they're killing off all these fucking. Guys. It's fucking great, and then it emphasizes Domino's like luck powers. I love Domino in this. I thought she, I would want. It, I wish there was more of Domino. I kept staring at her vitiligo eye patch because it kind of looked like vitiligo, and she had a little bit on her hand. Of course, they don't ever fucking say anything about like what's that on your eye. But uh, I, I love the way they showed her luck powers in that scene in the street. Uh, v- uh very awesome. Are we still on funny bits? Yes. What was the other? Uh, f- there was four things in the, the movie Wolverine that really made me laugh. thing in the beginning was hilarious. Oh, that was pretty good. Great opening scene with yeah. the, the Wolverine music box. Yeah. Which uh, they scrambled else? and had to put together like after Logan came out. And I love how it starts with fuck you. Fuck Wolverine. It's the first I line. I enjoyed. I don't know if you guys went. I, I don't know if you guys were where they went a little lingered too long of this, but I was with my mom and she especially enjoyed him with the little legs <laughs> baby legs was great i did yeah, that was a little yeah they, they straight they, they lingered on that for a well, while like this is they took the baby hands and just hands. fucking made it bigger and farther and it became i enjoyed it when he gets dick. up on the legs and shakes <laughs> yes. cable's hand i'm yes. like this is ridiculous well, that's this where is awesome. weasel is like you're just shirt cocking it man look at you <laughs> and then they do the basic instinct spoof where he crosses oh, yeah. there it's like jesus oh my god <laughs> that look i really i thought that was hilarious it was so fucking disturbing and funny uh, that was the second thing I thought. Look, in a movie with so many jokes, honestly, there was like four things that actually got me to laugh out loud. That was two well, of them. Because they're just throwing them. There's at too you, many. I none. think it was a little. There's not even like bits. It's no. it's just quip. It's in it's meta humor. It's it's. But there is a joke that's so inside. It's about a specific crew member on the movie. Oh shit! Well, why are you putting in jokes about a fucking crew member that three people? Where he goes, hit it, Laird. Like Laird is some guy that works on the movie, and it's like a inside. Jo- what the fuck? Do we really no. need that? Do we need that? Yeah. Uh, Rex, Deadpool man. What other uh, what other part made you laugh? Oh my god! I mean, I, the um, the there was a lot of things that didn't make me laugh, but yes. trying to think about <laughs> what made me laugh. Oh god, I can't think of anything off the top of my head to tell you. You want me truth. to give you another one? Yes. Yeah. While well, he's thinking. Yeah. This is, I mean, super spoiler. End credits. The, That's the funniest fucking thing in the movie. When he kills Deadpool in X Men Wolverine Origins and then kills himself looking all fucking happy and unbelievable Canada when he gets the Green Lantern Dude, part, yeah, I, I did crack up. That was really funny too. That uh, that uh, Deadpool cleaning up the Ryan Reynolds timeline was uh, the second funniest thing uh, after the X Force deaths in the fucking movie, but and you, it happens you, uh, at the very end. Do you? Did you guys notice? what he basically did by the end of those credits. I don't know if I'm yeah, well, going too look, far. Let's, let's jump ahead. He, he, it's kind of like an infinity war thing. He undoes a lot of what happens in the movie. He, the whole movie is null by the end of the whole movie. Didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, technically it didn't, did it? It didn't happen because, he, because he saves her. First he saves Vanessa. So that he means saves Vanessa. So he doesn't get on, the, on the oil, oil bins to blow himself up. None so of that. Colossus happens. can find right. him. But right. then why does he, Oh, he saved Peter first and then he saved Vanessa. Did he have to go backwards? Because why he is he back, saving? He went Peter? backwards and he saved everything. But he started with the the team, and then he went back and saved Vanessa. 
Wait, and you know what? I'm okay with this because it's kind of like a commentary on fucked up X Men yeah, timeline. It was a little bit of a, a shot at They're that like, stuff. Fuck it. So fuck what? it. You just saw it. the whole movie you saw doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, yeah. It didn't happen. No. Yeah. It was hilarious. What would you guys think of like this whole the 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 fridging? Uh, fridging has come up with the Vanessa character. They fridged the character, meaning they kill her before the opening credits. Which I love the opening Bond title sequence and the credits going. What the fuck happened? Did you just kill Vanessa? Uh, but did I, what did we feel about that? Yeah. What I mean, uh, does it deserve this criticism of fridging? You need it. This is like a, a writing, you know, trope, but you need him because to lose it, something. No, no, because you have to understand it's a meta poke at the series, at, at the comic book genre. But if it, Fridging is a thing in, jo- in the is, genre. It is, but I feel like if he was going to make a, a, a comment on that, it could have been a little more obvious that he was making a, a commentary on the fridging. Like, either have a fridge. Like, she falls into a fridge and it closes. Or mention, I don't think they, they had that in mind. They were just like, we need something to motivate him in the beginning. We're going to fucking kill Vanessa. Well, and, and okay, I'll answer it also. Where does this the word way. fridging come from? It is when Kyle Rayner's yes. girlfriend yes. gets, uh, I think, major force. Yeah, one of the one of the villains puts his girlfriend in a fridge, and Gail oh. Simone. Kills Gail her. Simone actually coined this term, uh, and it became a thing. And everyone's like, "Oh, they fridge Vanessa." But like, what? How else are you going to motivate? That's a, that's the, the only Deadpool. thing though. Deadpool's a tough character to get because he's invincible, right? So you have to figure out ways to keep the character motivated to do shit. And the only re- only way to do it in this film. In the, in the continuity they've established so far is the only person he's close with is Vanessa. Yeah, the only thing he loves is Vanessa. Yeah, and then Vanessa's got to tell him to to keep doing stuff. Well, he right. dies from like the a grave. Bu- yeah, a bunch of times he like kind of that, dies. That, that bothered me a little bit. Because she's leading him. And she's yeah. helping him be a better person. Right. From the beyond. Yeah, it's a weird motivation. It's just weird. I mean, but could they have done it without killing her? They maybe could have done it better. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't necessarily need to be fri- like females don't necessarily need to be killed to motivate them. Like, I don't understand, though. It's like, okay, you gotta save this kid in order to to fuck me in heaven. Like, it, uh, it's just, it just it, that math doesn't work out. <laughs> but it's Deadpool. But, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It just makes it not No, I'd say, like, you could just explain anything by just being like, well, that's just fucking Deadpool. It's yeah. just it Deadpool. doesn't need to really make that much sense. That's it, just lazy It makes enough right. sense because... He wants to fuck her in heaven. Oh, okay, that 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 makes sense. That's Deadpool. Yeah. The only thing that uh, that was interesting about that whole uh, him going to heaven, where he actually goes into a dead pool, like he falls into water oh, and yeah. he's dead. Yeah, yeah. And so and they use the Deadpool like meta like meme there or trope there. He is the Deadpool. Uh, lots of great cameos in the movie. Did anyone expect to see like the whole cast of the young X Men? Uh, back there, I thought that was pretty. That was a pretty fucking yeah, good gag. I would have liked them to go back to that too. I thought that that was a way. That was like a cute little thing. But like, they're never like outside when he's in the building. No. They're always locked in a room. <laughs> I, well, they just I, locked themselves yes, in a room. No, I imagine it like they're like, oh fuck, fucking Wade is coming. Everyone, shut up. Let's go in the room. Wade's coming. Like he's the neighbor you don't want. Like nobody wants to talk to fucking Wade. So they just hide and pretend they're not home. Because he's just. Yeah, so but once that. they find out that so like annoying. fucking the juggernauts loose, they don't fucking show up. No, they don't help them. They're like, yeah. Yep, they'll, juggernaut voiced by Ryan Reynolds. It's Deadpool. It's, exactly. <laughs> like, like, it's Deadpool. This is the thing that I don't get. Like, how do they decide which X Men to use? Like, Colossus was in the other X Men movies, right, and they right, use right. him in this movie. Yeah. Then they bring on Negasonic Team, Warhead, whatever fucking how long and his name girlfriend is. Yukio, her girlfriend Yukio. Okay. Well, Yukio yeah. is also in the Wolverine. Yes, like which is yeah. interesting the that they use that name. Yeah, yeah, but the well, the only thing that doesn't well, a lot of things don't make sense because it's a fucked up X Men universe. But one of the things I caught is the the cast they use for the X Men is the cast that is from the eighties. Well, it's the Dark Phoenix cast. Yeah, yeah, but that's that cast. They're all young. Like that's that that timeline is the nineteen eighties, nineties at most. Yeah, it's Deadpool. And this is what two thousand eighteen. That's weird. a good point. When is Dark Phoenix supposed to take like, place? Why, shouldn't I be seeing like old ass professors? They should have had like Kelsey Grammer. He and said it smelled like Patrick Stewart. He does say smell, but then those X Men is James McAvoy. McAvoy. Yeah, yeah, he's there, McAvoy. So like, it's so fun. Like, it's a little much. Like he does, he does say Patrick Stewart. They're really like, like basically. There's no rules. There's they no were just, anything. So my problem with this, the second one is, that it felt like they were just throwing a lot of things at the wall, and uh, just the first one had a little more clever jokes, and it was a little more focused, maybe. Uh, this oh one was God, just like we're so keep dark, so like the DC universe. I, I love, I love that, and I loved all the the callbacks to the MCU movies. A lot of references to MCU movies. They were all fucking. Oh great. yeah, there's like there's a 
There's a cybernetic Thanos arm. For, yeah. Soldier. Uh, he Thanos. goes black, black Panther uh, or black, black widow. He's like, tell black, black widow. And then he calls Dopinder Brown Panther at one point. Yeah. And he's like free. And uh, Cable's gun goes to 11. I thought that was great. Let's talk about Brolin. I can see why Brolin kind of liked uh, Infinity War a little bit more like working in it because I felt like he had a little bit more to do than in this movie, even though he's actually in this movie. He's just kind of there to be, you know, the he's, plot device. As Rugboy said, he is there as the Terminator for about yeah, yeah. three quarters of his until, role. Until, yeah, everything until switches. Until he has the, the change of heart. Yeah. And, like, there's no bad guy in the movie, really. Nope. So weird structure. Is that Essex? Is that Nathaniel Essex? Yeah, so the, the mutant orphanage Essex house, that's Mr. Sinister. Is that him? That's, that, that that short fat guy? Yeah. Oh, no, oh, well, I don't know if he's going to be Mr. Sinister, but the okay. Essex name but is Essex is definitely yeah. is tied to well, Mr. Sinister. And he gets run over by Dopinder. Oh uh, yeah, that's Dopinder. Great. He's like courage. Um That's his uh, secret power. This is the thing about that the whole ending scene or the whole entire plot at the end that falls apart for me. And I don't even know why I give a shit because it's a Deadpool movie. None of right, it's supposed right. to make sense at all. Nobody cares. It's it, And he even turns to the camera and goes, well, this is just lazy writing. I, yeah. This is just the whole movie. It's just lazy writing. It but, is. Uh, so uh, the, he wants to keep this kid from murdering this dude. Just murder the dude. He's right there in front of you. Just shoot him. <laughs> shoot him for the kid. And the way the kid gets what he wants, but he doesn't turn into Yes, like, he doesn't get a taste for killing. But that so, guy finally does die anyway, so. Yeah, he gets hit by Dupinder. Yeah. So it's like, okay, like, you know, but they have to, like, they had to milk this moment out, you know? So they had to milk this moment of him being, uh, redeeming this kid. I like the kid. I thought, uh, yeah. uh Julian Dennison, what's his name, played Russell. Uh, I did like the kid, He too. was, he was really funny. I like the, I like the, they're like, we never really get any fat kids. Yes. He's like, you ever seen a plus size superhero? I was thinking about you, Imran. <laughs> I was like, preach. You kind of reminded me of that kid. I was totally that there kid. There is our Imran-ness about it. Yeah, was. right? I put it in my prison wallet. Mm. He pulls out a pen from his prison wallet. Uh, and I just love how he like, he bonds with Juggernaut. His prison wallet. He's like, oh <laughs> my God. That? It's like, ah. Oh, oh, no, don't use that. There's so many running other gags. things that I, I, that I wish there was more of. Yeah. Besides, you know, the kid's sticking inside of his ass. <laughs> um, is a little bit more of Josh Brolin uh, or, or Cable's uh, backstory. Yes, yes. Because yeah. you really could, don't know yes. anything about no. him at all. You don't know anything. You don't nope. know his powers. You don't know why nope. he's, what he, if he's a mutant. Yep. You don't know anything I mean, you about where, where he's but you don't from. Know what he can do. Yeah. I mean, even that, How far in the future Why didn't they from? put up a fucking year? I, at least in that scene, give me a caption, like a hundred years in the future, something, nothing. I didn't find him boring. I actually found him, the way they played him, to be kind of interesting, I just wanted to know more. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm with Rug Boy. Because look, that. plus, if you are a you know, if you're a combo reader, you're waiting for him to say Hope Summers and his you know, he's from the future and his ki- he's a kid of Cyclops and Jean Grey and all this shit. He does say Hope eventually the second time, but yeah, we Cable could have used a little more fleshing out, just a little bit. They let him. They played him almost too straight. Yeah, yeah he was the straight guy. To the well, sh- it makes it more funny when he's bouncing off of a straight guy. Right. Yeah. I could have used more blind L too. She's great. I just I could watch them hang out all day, just fucking riff. Oh yeah, blind L. I mean, it's it, it's a hard movie to be like for me to even really get all that critical on right, because the, right. the movie itself doesn't want to doesn't really. But I feel the like, movie itself isn't treating itself. But all I that feel seriously. like sometimes the what, the movie it's it's a commentary on sequels on superhero genre. But I also feel like it does exactly what it's making fun of, like in a in a serious intention. This is what kind of makes the movie keeps it grounded is that you have a action guy who's not a comedy director directing it. Ah. So a lot of this feels a lot more like an action movie. It does. Yeah. Which is so great. When the comedy is when the comedy is so pervasive, it, it almost seems like it's intruding a little bit. I would like to see a transition more to like an action comedy, like a, like a real so they just, action they're, comedy. They're, they're, Basically, all they have to do is just keep Deadpool as the only thing that's wacky. He's everyone the only else is straight. Everybody else is straight. Mm. I think that if you do that, then we have something that we can that has legs. But if you keep doing these like these extreme spoofs, like having this guy show up because he he read a, tr- a Craigslist ad and then he's jumping out of a plane like that. I love like, Peter. Now he's yeah, but now he's a silly. 
as Deadpool is. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know, you understand. Yeah. So now that's when you're going into naked gun territory. Yeah, yeah that's why it's, uh, it reminded me of and, those. And movies. you have like, and you have the character whose power is to throw up on you. Yeah, and now Dupinder is now going. I liked him better when he was straight, dude. Dupinder. Right. Like I, I don't like the new uh, obsessed with like Tom Cruise in the Interview with a Vampire. I mean, I'll, it's funny. I'll, it's I'll funny, but like, nuts. it doesn't Although, make. It, and now it's starting. Now it's starting to spiral out of control. I love the moment that wasn't in the trailer when Peter originally interviews and Deadpool's like, "You're in." Deb, uh, Deadpool's like, "Fuck!" and he drops his shit. Like that was a funny beat that I wasn't expecting, and he didn't see it in the trailer. And it was a great way to kind of keep I, it I fresh. To, you were talking about funny stuff earlier. I forgot to mention this. Yeah, and I know we talked about. We might have already talked about this on the show. <laughs> I don't know. My brain is fucked up. Uh, <laughs> but the the Celine Dion song. <laughs> oh, opening yes. With that, I, yes. I, I honestly really have you seen that. that the, there's a video where he's I haven't like, seen the video. Yeah, but there's the, a girl the, dancing the, her singing this song so seriously. And it's Deadpool. And about it fit Deadpool. like the the James Bond opening like it was fucking Adele or something, you know? Yeah, it was very Skyfall. And it was, I, just I, I was hilarious. Like, I turned to my mom yeah. like, you know, who's singing that song? Celine. Like, who? <laughs> Celine Dion. She's like, what the fuck? So you so you. Imran, you really like this whole operatic choir thing? I just like holy shit balls. I'm just like, shit balls. Uh, holy I shit found balls. That, I found that to be annoying too. I couldn't really hear it during the movie. It was like really buried for me. Yeah. So I, it, it didn't really bother me. But no, like, I, it, it, it distracted me from no, the scene. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> because they were trying to make like an epic fight scene or whatever. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden holy shit balls comes out. I mean, and you know, Juggernaut was CGI ish, but it didn't matter. Like, it was fine. Well, like, I, I thought he was fine. They called it out. Yeah, he's like, big CGI fight coming up. And I thought the fight with Colossus was, was pretty good. Yeah. I did like that up until the point where he shoves the wire up that's, his ass. You know, that's and I'm like, they always got to go for the poop joke. That's what yeah, I'm you saying. Can, you got to, you got to, like Rug Boy said, you got to tone it down with the other Th- characters. This being is why wacky. I was kind of like, this movie is not what I was expecting because they dumbed it down instead of keep st- staying clever. Like the fucking electrical cord up the ass. Yeah, and there's so many poop and dick jokes already. Uh, I mean, I don't mind it. It's, it's, it's just like, it's going. I think that they're they're in a dangerous spot of it spiraling out of control because now yes, he's yes. starting to affect everything in the movie. Yes, I think in the first one, I think Deadpool was more like the only real wacky character, and it was great how people reacted to him. Yeah, you know that was the whole gag. So now everybody's wacky in this. I movie. think you could find a balance between the lowbrow potty jokes and some clever, like actual clever fucking jokes. I mean, there are there's a lot of meta jokes. There's man. a lot of meta jokes, there's, but I mean, they're clever if you're you're a fan of the comics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other meta stuff, uh, you know, the one I, I really again, reference the, is good. The superhero yeah. landing and him being like, "This is so not." <laughs> He's fair. like, "Oh my god, so painful." Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, He's like, like that's not functional all at all. <laughs> did you see the Alan Tudyk and Matt Damon cameos as the rednecks? I oh. did not even know what he said. I did not talking about the toilet. How to wipe? You got to get the baby wipes, and you go back in with another piece of toilet paper. I was so interested in the conversation. I was right. even looking at it. I was like, "Wow, what are they talking about wiping their ass?" I'm in. I'm, I'm in. Okay, I was like, let's that's see a here. pretty good method. I'm gonna have yeah. to try that. Yeah. I never thought about that. Uh, the kid is Fire Fist, which is funny. Everyone's like, "Your name is a lame." Uh, did you see the cure for blindness that he refers to in the first movie with Blind Al is actually there when he goes to get the cocaine. You see under the cocaine, it says the cure for blindness. And that was the that was the other time I laughed hard was when he put that cocaine in his mask and just smushed it. Like, I've fucking laughed out loud. Yeah, and I would have <laughs> loved to see him on that cocaine doing something out. funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, more Marvel Marvel that. references where he goes, grumpy old fuck with a Winter Soldier arm, and then he tries to do the sun's getting real low bit, which I thought was funny. Then there's yeah. a- Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was funny. I there's, enjoyed that. There's a Martha joke also. He does the Martha yeah. joke. Yeah. Say some of these, I was people were laughing. I wasn't laughing out loud. I was like, "It's it's okay. It's not yeah, that funny." A lot of jokes in there where I wasn't. It's was a little too repetitive. Laughing. I was just yeah. nodding, like, "Okay, yeah. that's kind of clever." Yeah, yeah. They were dragging things out a little bit too much, but I don't know. Still, was Stanley in this movie? Well, apparently, he's there's a graffiti portrait of him on a building. In one of the scenes, like when they're parachuting or when Domino's falling, I didn't. I saw this movie twice, by the way. I did not see. Oh, you Stan- saw it twice. I did see it. I did see it twice because uh, it was fun. I wanted to have fun again. I did not see the Stanley fucking portrait the second time. I was fucking looking for it. Yeah. Uh, and I even liked the end credits. They were d- d- drawn by Scotty Young, a uh, great cartoonist. Uh, what else? What did you think of? Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. There's Tomino? more gags. Did we talk about Tomino? Tomino well, was good. Did. We did. I did. I just talked about her armpits, but you do want to talk. <laughs> solid. Yeah. I thought fun. she was great. She, her, yeah. her acting was good. She looked cool. Uh, made she, the power funny and, and uh, kind of cool. Yeah. The power look really cool. She's Man, the only one to survive. She's the only one. So the team at the end is like Colossus, Deadpool, Negasonic, Yukio, Domino, and Dilpinder. I think Negasonic got, got a raw deal in this movie. She didn't really have a lot to do. She didn't have anything. Wow, she shows up I mean, and way older, though. And not only that, but, like, they made her fix the fucking time machine. Like, why is she the... Like, all of a sudden, she's a fucking mechanic? Like, Beast, Beast should be working on that shit. Yeah, like, like come on. I did love every time you killed... got it in the budget. Uh, yeah, they, they can't afford any more fucking <laughs> They didn't even need to show him. Just have like a furry hand. Like, yeah, just that's flop true. it down. That's you know? true. I love Yukio and Wade. Just like they're like best buds. They're just like, hi, Wade. Hi, Yukio. Uh, he makes a point to say hi. It's very cute. It's just crazy that they mentioned Shatterstar and Mojo World and all this shit. And then they just fucking kill him. It's hilarious. Yeah, Deadpool, man. It's hilarious. <laughs> all I, I was just it. thrown it's off Deadpool. because I saw Shatterstar kicking ass in the trailer, and I was like, oh, there's going to be at least a fight scene. I mean, I were did you, love were this. Were you as upset as Hulk running into the camera in Avengers Infinity War? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not. I mean, it was. I I understand why they did that, and I was like, oh, there's nowhere else to for them to go from here. So <laughs> the movie I found this interesting article on Hollywood Reporter, uh, Deadpool 2's secret companion piece to Logan, and if you think about it, it has a lot of similarities. Both guys trying to kill themselves. Uh, both guys find kids that turn them turn their you know the way they think around, and they got to save these kids. Uh, it's just very interesting parallel. Uh, one's just super serious, and one uh, is just a complete fuck box. I feel like they're on a really good. I mean, they're on a good path with, they with are. Deadpool for the most part. If you're a fan of Deadpool, you're getting what you want. Yeah, I mean, it's an enjoyable film. Yeah, it 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 made me laugh a few times, which is I, I was expecting to laugh more because of the first one. I laughed a lot more. I did. Me too. That's what I felt. I was definitely but laughing more in the first one. I was actually enjoying the action in this yeah. more. The action definitely surpasses in the second one. I think one. the action is better. Yeah. So, I think like, the addition of Cable off. is fun too. Yeah, we got like a nice trade off of like, um, I mean, the first one's a romance movie. It's got more of like a love story to it and it's got, uh, that grips you there. This one, this one is more of like a, is he a hero or not kind of thing. Like what? What? What makes a hero? And in, in this ah. case, Deadpool's a hero because he, he said four moments or something, right? Yeah, and four he decides to save the kid, give the kid a chance. Did you think I had a problem with kind of the real emotional moments? Which really, like, Miranda Bakker and Ryan Reynolds have have a great chemistry. You do buy it, uh, but like, I felt like it, it kind of clashed with the fucking wacky, crazy rest of the movie. Like, did you find it well balanced with the emotional stuff, and then? Just super off the wall shit. I kind of wanted it to go more off the wall. It was a little jarring for me, but I don't know. I didn't have much of a problem with it, to be honest. Okay. It was, I'll admit though, it was like when they tried to get really emotional, I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I can't get on that level of I this emotion. Right. right now I don't know if with it's, the journey is, I've been on on this the, film. Yeah. You're like, where are you going? But, like, which is why I kind of liked at the end when he's, when he's trying to die yeah. and he keeps being like, Oh man, this is really hard. So oh, let's fuck. talk about that. Who liked the long did, death and who didn't? I liked it up to a point and then it just kept going. And then I'm like, all right, now, now you're milking it too long. <laughs> I thought it was kind of like, funny. The first time that you do the joke. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. He's yeah. not dead. And then he keeps going. Yeah, he's still not dead. Yeah. And that he, he's still not dead. Okay. So that was one of the cases where maybe you could have left that last bit out where he's just saying he's just saying random words just to say words yeah uh, i did like how they used uh the same song from logan when logan died at the end the did same really? yes same exact score they got also because i if you listen to the empire podcast they have a great uh interview with ryan reynolds he also talks about how hard it was to get that footage from uh x-men origins for the end post credit oh, yeah, well, scene hard because it's not digital and they couldn't find oh, wow. a copy of the reel and they had to go back and get like a copy of the copy. And he's like, we almost couldn't make that happen because they couldn't find the film because it was shot on film. I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they did it. That was really one of the best jokes. what did you guys think of the black Tom Cassidy joke running gag? Too oh, much about, or just uh, right? Cable being racist. Yeah, well, the whole thing is black. Like Black Tom Cassidy is is Irish, and it's just funny. He's called Black Tom. Yeah. No, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, yeah. I liked I liked him calling Cable a racist. I thought I found that to be funny. <laughs> and like, Cable's just like I am not. 
racist. <laughs> like, you kill Black Tom, you racist <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> but then when he's trying to, it's, Wade's trying to remember his name, he's like, Black Tim, Black Evan. I don't know. He's definitely African American. Yeah. Uh, but apparently also they revealed Black Tom, Ryan Reynolds said Black Tom had a bigger part in this movie and they had to cut it because of the budget. So I think there's going to be an extended cut because I feel like there's all these scenes they shot, like there's shit in the trailer that's not in the movie that they're going to need to go somewhere. I doubt it. No? <laughs> no I don't think so. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah there'll probably there be might some be a deleted footage, scenes. But, yeah. I've deleted heard, scenes. I saw some articles that they are working on, you know, they're promising an extended cut because I feel like there's more. There's more. The thing there. with Deadpool is there's really no rules. No. Like you can, you can do whatever. I mean, you have to try to make it fit in the framework of a traditional film, but if if they wanted to add an extended cut, you could just have Deadpool go, hey, more footage, yeah, and yeah. just like throw in more footage. Like it, it, They can write whatever with Deadpool. Should, they, should it have some kind of rules, though, even though he's breaking the rules? You need, I mean, you, you can't have him well, be too much of a fucking asshole because then he's just a fucking asshole. There is this question. There is, can Deadpool integrate into the Marvel Universe? That's my next question. Can Deadpool ever be used in an X-Men movie? And if they keep doing that, like if he's the only wacky person that is kind of he's no one else is, it could possibly work. But if you're making it like so everybody is that way, because that's what they did. That's what they did wrong with the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like they had, like, you know, a few guys for comic release now. And then everybody, every character became comic relief and it uh, started yeah. to lose something for me. So you can't do that with X-Men. You can't do that in the MCU. I mean, even though every Every movie in the MCU, everybody's cracking jokes now, and, it, and I feel like that that's annoying. Well, they kind of did that with Colossus, too. They kind of, like, draxed him a little bit by making him, uh, yeah. you know, a punch. He a was draxed in the first Deadpool. He was draxed in the first one. Right. So, look, we know. Let's, wait, let me get on, let yeah. comment on that real yeah. quick. That was what I was going to say is what I'm interested in seeing next. Yes, actually, what do we want to see next? I don't actually care to see a Deadpool 3. It'll probably come out. Yes. And I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah. But what I really want to see is some some writer be clever enough to tackle the character and put him in someone else's franchise. Yes. Whether it be X-Men, whether it be Logan, whether it be the MCU, if yes. that MCU does, if Disney does buy Fox yeah. and see if they can weave that character into a more serious franchise and see if that can work. That really out. is the challenge for a writer with this I just character. See, I just want to see if someone can do it. So wait, let, so here's, here's what's kind of in the works. Drew Goddard is working on this X-Force movie. Now, what is this? I kind of agree with you, Anthony. I don't know if we need a Deadpool three. I kind of after this, I kind of think he they should I use see him, him bounce off other characters. Yes, and they should use him in small doses as an ensemble. Now, if they make this X Force movie, Drew Goddard, is it R rated? Is it an action comedy? Will is it, it take, a Deadpool movie? That's the thing. Will it take you out of it if he's the only character breaking the fourth wall occasionally? And everyone else is straight. I, I kind of would like because X Force is kind of like a weird '90s team. Anyways, you could kill all of them; it doesn't matter. It could be whatever set of mutants. I would love to see an R-rated action comedy X Force with Deadpool leading them, but not being the lead. It would Maybe be, this is me being sick. Yeah, but I even want to see them try to put Deadpool in a PG-13 film and see a writer fuck, try to figure see, that out. How is that going to happen? I just, I just want to see. Them, I just want to see them. Put this. It's like putting a different ingredient into a into a, a oh, recipe. I, I just want to see I what would happen. I can't imagine this Deadpool being in any mainstream MCU movie. Uh, this article came out on Screen Rant. Rob Liefeld supports Deadpool in the MCU if Ryan Reynolds retains control. Uh, if you you can't put Deadpool now in a PG thirteen movie and not have him swear, unless you make it a point and call it out. Like I still think the funny gag would be he tries to swear in an MCU movie and it's always bleeped and he's frustrated because he can't swear. That could see, work. I mean, there's. I just want to see him do. I just want to see them try things with this character. Can you put this Deadpool in a PG thirteen movie? I've seen two Deadpool know. movies. They've tried Deadpool and they've obviously had it work. Yeah. Now let's try try him with something else. That would be that would be interesting. I think they should. I don't need a third. Deadpool. No, I I don't either. I think I think you fast track this X Force movie before the Disney Fox thing happens. There's, there's no overriding theme for a trilogy, anyways. No, no. It's just Deadpool's adventures at this point. Which is yeah. I, I would have like this movie didn't even where does need... he go in the solo movies? Even I don't know. That's a that's that's like, matter. I don't, there's nothing yeah. for him really to do. I know. I want to see. I would love to see a would movie. You see a Deadpool and Cable like just straight up. 
But we already kind of saw like that. Maybe like a Deadpool Cable road trip movie, like where they spoof a road trip movie. Like the movie doesn't need a plot. Just show me one thing after another. Are these guys hanging out? Crazy so shit you, happening. Or what you could do is you could fix that. You could have Kim and Dead and Cable just traveling through time. Oh, and fixing shit. Well, just doing weird shit, just like going to the dinosaur age, yeah. like riding fucking dinosaurs, like going into the future. Oh my God, that would be so crazy. That would be even more Having crazy. them go into Mojo World. Mojo World would be great. They mentioned having it. Him, and having it them exists. fight the, the Shi'ar or something stupid. Wow, Deadpool. And then does he show up in a, you know, in a, in a Spider-Man movie or another movie cameo? I, I can't. Personally, I don't think I can handle a third Deadpool film. I don't. Th- I don't think it needs one. I don't think we right need. Now. I think Deadpool. you want an X Force ensemble Deadpool. Rugs, what do you want to see next from this? I don't know, honestly. Like I, <laughs> like what is Deadpool? I, I think the interesting about Deadpool is like the way he interacts with other other characters. Yeah, and yeah. how other characters hate his guts or they think he's annoying, and the fact that he is good with his, uh, what he does. He's good at killing people. He's a good, he's a good uh, hand-to-hand combat. So yeah, now, if you put him people. in a movie where you can't kill anybody, what's yes. the point? I mean, we got a Spider-Man who they're never going to show him punching anybody, apparently. I don't know yeah. if they're going to, what the fuck? Uh, this Deadpool, I love, Ryan Reynolds is the only guy who can play this character. He needs to stay R-rated. I don't want them to cut the balls off of him, but I don't need I'm a whole sick. other Deadpool. I just want to see someone write, have to be constrained on writing Deadpool. Because he's yeah. when he's not in his own film, the rules are different. He has to follow those rules. Right. But does he still break the fourth wall? Is he still the only one who knows he's in a movie that he is a, a, being played by Ryan Reynolds? Like it's so, it's so weird. I've always found him. it interesting when I was re- when I was reading comics, when they would have a comic with Deadpool in it yeah. and they'd have to weave him into like something bigger. Yeah. You know, and I was like, "How do you do this?" Because this character plays totally different rules. They did it right. Remember what was that big uh, event where he was white and it changed his soul? Was that? Oh, it was uh, like original sin or something. Yeah, like that? he was yeah. like that's you're what right. I'm like talking about. Yeah, it's like weird shit. It's how do you? But it worked, and that's that's it worked. Where Deadpool? I don't know if it got, worked. I don't remember how they wrote it. I don't <laughs> know if it'll it'll throw the whole movie off. Right? It might. I yeah. don't know. It's a that's a weird. It's a weird thing to make happen. That's a weird thing. All right, guys. Well, let's. Let's finish this up by rating the movie. Let me know if you liked it. How, how are we doing this? Because we always, I, we always rate the movies numbers. and I forget how let's we're going to do it. Let's go numbers. Out of 10? Numbers out of 10. Out of 10 yeah, and whether, we always do it, right? Whether, yeah. oh, I'm stupid right now. It's, not, he's, he's, it's the Mollies. I don't blame him. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, sometime, and then uh, let me know if you liked it better or worse than the first movie. Anthony started off. I liked it better. Really? I liked it better, yeah. I oh, go, uh, my God. Seven and a half out of 10. And I liked it better because I enjoyed... The meta jokes a little more, and I enjoyed the action more. I and I and I liked. I think for me, the big thing is is the first movie was all Deadpool, and it was great. You know, if you're a big Deadpool fan, but I get kind of tired of the character after a while. So to see Cable come in and to see yeah, Domino yeah, come the in new for characters. me was, was a lot more fun. And as a child, I always wanted to see Colossus and Juggernaut fight on screen. That's true. So I just like jizzed myself, even though it's like kind of played as a joke. Yeah, but that was a great still, matchup. Still seeing those yeah. two characters fight you, yeah. for the first time on the big screen was like, Shit, ah. that's a good point. I didn't think that was amazing. Like when you They're always like wanted big to rivals see, yeah. in the MCU. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, 7.5. 7. 7.5. 7. You liked it better than the first one. Interesting. Uh, Rug Boy. I'm going to go with an eight. Oh, wow. Um, because I like the action. A lot. Uh, I like this director. I like that whole opening montage of him killing a bunch of people. That's with um, the, in the slow mo where the dude's on fire. Yeah, with that was like pretty sick. <laughs> nine to five playing in the background by Dolly Parton. There's some great gun play in there. Um, there's some like really cool shit going on. It is a smaller movie. It is not like I don't know how much it cost, but it looks like a smaller it movie. Costs it costs more feel- than the last than the first yeah. one. Yeah. Um. It, it could have gone bigger, honestly. It could have gone a lot bigger, but uh, I did like it almost tied with the first one. I think the first one has a better story, has a, a better narrative, but it's very light on the action. Except for that, that, that first scene, I guess, that where he's um in the cars. In, in the I mean, home. and that is such an inventive, like, in the car flipping scene. Yeah. You know, that was But uh, this one has amazing. just, like... Like five more different scenes, like they like they, that's true. They've like quadrupled the amount of action. Man, so. okay. So I mean, like I, I'm like okay for, it. I'll I'll come back for the action. I mean, not the jokes will be stale, but at least the action will be cool. So there's there's more of a reason to watch it a second time than the first one because like after you watch the first one, you know all the jokes or 
or the second time where you know all the jokes. I'm like, okay, there's no reason to watch this movie. There's not enough action in it to, besides seeing Marina Baccarin half naked in the movie, there's really no reason for me to tune in again. Yeah, and the second one, the action will is good on the repeat viewing. Yeah, you're probably gonna enjoy the action a few times. Hmm, okay, so you give it an eight and kind of tied a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay, man, that's I, interesting. I don't remember what I gave the first one. I don't remember either. I'm gonna give this one an eight also. Uh, while uh, it was bigger, I did enjoy the, the new characters and him bouncing off other people and the action. Definitely, the action surpassed the last one. I I think I lo- I think I like the first one just a little bit better. Right. Just a little bit because even for me, believe it or not, the Deadpool shtick by the end of this movie was wearing a little bit thin because there was so- like if he held back a few of those fucking jokes. Uh, it might have helped it a little bit, but or if the writing was just a little bit better, a little bit more clever. Yes, if it was more fu- like the first one had a great structure overall. You know, with the origin was within. Uh, it was in the flashback of the middle, of the, like really well put together. Uh, this one, I don't know, it didn't really have that, but uh, fucking fun movie. Uh, and again, I found I thought I laughed harder in the first movie, so that's why I think the first movie edges it out a little. But they're very close. They're similar and different. So similar and yet different, very close tied movies. So good stuff though. Two Deadpool. Another thing I want to say before we break is yeah. or we, we're done is that Deadpool is not a character that's close to my heart or anything right, like that. Right. So yeah. any liberties that they take or anything that they do it's with them, fine. it doesn't it yeah. doesn't affect me yeah. in a way that somebody that I re- like Spider Man or somebody that's really close to my heart, yeah, like would be uh, I would be a, probably more of a stickler for things. So. You, Take that into consideration when you're like, why is he giving Deadpool yeah. such a good uh, but score? But I agree. I mean, I am the same way. These movies, I look at purely on like the comedic arts. Like, do the jokes work? Is the pacing done? Is the you know, is it clever? It's really more about the comedy than the character for me. They could do whatever they want with the character. It's fine. Well, it's Deadpool. I, I wouldn't say they could do whatever they want. They did whatever they want in Wolverine Origins. Oh, well, not like people that. fucking hated yes. that. Well, yes, don't do that. That's not what I mean. Whatever you want, <laughs> leave it in Ryan Reynolds' hands. At least he knows. He Nail the clearly origin, knows. Make how to him do a this. crazy guy with cancer and wear, wear the red well, suit. And then, and you're good. yeah, don't sew his mouth shut. Don't Those sew movies never happened. Shot. He Deadpool took care of it. It's it great. Didn't happen. Nope. Yes, it. Yes, it. It didn't. Is that, did I use right. that right? Did I use did that, that right? Did that movie happen? Yes. It. Yes. It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, that how, is that right? Is that how we use it? I think that's how you would use it. Yes. It. It's hard for me to really think critically about this film because it the, the movie it doesn't lend itself to being thought about critically other than like the jokes like you just the movie is just about analyzing the jokes are they funny or are they not yeah i mean it's hard to even remember a lot of them i'd have yeah. to watch they ran, it again they did so many it's weird because like you're never going to get the initial belly laugh that you get when you first hear something you're going to come expecting it and you're going to like you maybe like smile or chuckle but you're not going to get that reaction of like oh shit that's how mm-hmm. I felt this whole movie. And as opposed to the first one, I was like, oh, shit, the whole time because you had never seen that shit. I am glad yeah. they saved Peter. I want more Peter. Fucking Peter. <laughs> Do something I, with I, your life. I enjoyed him getting thrown up on, though. And like <laughs> and being, then his like, arm came half. off. Yeah. And like and then the other the guy's like in the fucking the wood chipper. Wood chipper. And he's like getting half his body is going. Zeitgeist he's in up. the wood chipper. Shatterstar in the helicopter was fantastic. <laughs> Uh, and just Deadpool's reaction to it. Well, was that, so and then good. just the fact that it's it, it's kind of like a proving ground for Domino's powers. Like she is actually fucking lucky. Yeah, she's like, I'm on it. I'm in. He's like, How the yeah. fuck are you in? And I even love the reference he makes about uh, that's a stupid idea. It sounds like it, it could be thought up by a writer who can't draw feet. Like they threw in a <laughs> Rob Lee field jab. Uh, that the uh, what's his name? Uh, the vomit guy. Zeitgeist is from yeah. a different version of X Force by Mike Allred. That it, there's a th- the issue where he's introduced the same thing happens. He leads the team and they all die in the mission in the comic book. So like X Force is always just like a bit of weird property. It could be whatever. It's not like the X Men where you gotta have these people. You put it's fucking put whoever you want in. I don't even remember. I think X Force when I was reading it was Cable, Domino, Feral. Yeah, and like some other fucking that was, and it was Rob Liefeld who fucking no, was making and the Shatterstar, show. Shatterstar, right? Yeah, but yeah, there's Shatterstar just to be just a huge fucking penis. <laughs> He's hilarious. <laughs> oh man, okay. I right. uh, got well, a couple of things in the mailbag, and we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, we have one audio review of the movie from our buddy Matt Miller. Oh fuck that guy. Well, no, let's see kidding, what Matt. he has to say. It's only one this time. Uh, he used the full ninety seconds though. 
What's up, guys? Matty J here. This is going to be a 90-second spoiler version of Deadpool 2. So start off very, 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 very funny. The theater was literally LOLing the whole time. Missed a lot of jokes probably from the laughter, but it was very funny. Probably funnier than about 90% of the movies that have come out in the past couple years. Comedy movies, that is, which is sad, but also amazing because Deadpool 2 was very funny. Packed with jokes and action. A lot of superhero references. Batman gets a shout out. Justice League, the Martha mom thing gets a shout out. Hawkeye gets totally shit on, which is amazingly funny. I forgot a lot about of 80s that. Yeah, that was a good joke. Classic songs to break up the tense and sad moments. That was great. Uh, a lot of callbacks to the first movie. There was a rewind scene where they basically set everything up and then they went back and showed you how it happened. Direct callback to the first movie. That was great. Um, super secret cameo that nobody saw coming. It only happens for about three seconds, but you can't miss it. It's amazing. Nobody saw that coming at all. Um, the villain in the movie comes out of nowhere, too. Didn't see this one coming as well, but also very awesome, even though there are some kind of uh, the flaws in the, the character design, but that's okay. Uh, there's a good team up at the end, of, towards the end of the movie, which is awesome to see. Uh, X Men cameo, which everybody loved. Got a geek boner in the theater. You can literally hear everybody's pants. Geek boner. Um, Josh Brolin getting called out for being Thanos, which was awesome. Guys, this movie was solid 8.5, borderline 9. Amazing movie. Very, very, very funny. All right. It was very oh, funny. Cut him off. No, it just ended. I think he cut himself oh. off. <laughs> That's the hey, end of the Matt thing. Matt Miller. Much better, man. Yeah, less creepier. Less creepy. Less Pokemon-y. So yeah. Less Mon. Less everything Mon-y. Yeah. Uh, that's a- you, can, you can do the, the creepy shit once in a while. All right, Matt. I want to get in. your real personality sometimes. We're so. back in with the Matt Miller audio pipes. Well done, Matt Miller. Thanks for your review. Uh, and I got one tweet I got to answer uh, based on our last episode where we talked about Miss Marvel possibly coming to the MCU. Kevin Feige hinted possibly something's in the works, maybe. Uh, and then we talked about kind of the backlash because uh, Riz Ahmed, Mindy Kaling, Kumail Nanjani all expressed interest in being part of this. Uh, and then people were like, oh, don't you think it should be a woman writer, a Pakistani woman writer? We went over why we don't think it should be. It would be great if it was, but it doesn't have to be. So at J-H-U-L-S-F out of San Francisco, Julesif, uh, tweets us at Jock and Nerdcast. Interesting convo about the possible writer for Miss Marvel. Curious, though, what is your take on a non-Pakistani American playing Kamala Khan in the MCU? Does it still not matter as long as they can act and well, this do This guy clearly didn't research? get the point of what we were saying. No, because this is a completely <laughs> separate uh, kind of situation. That's a face that's representing exactly. the character. Exactly. Right? First yes. of all, this is a... Preach, Rods. Okay, hold on. Let me give right. you this. Here's the rundown. Look, pretty much if a character is a certain thing, you the the people who make the movie should make the character look like it's suppo- they're supposed to be. Right. That's it. They're supposed to be true to the character. So if a character is whatever is Pakistani, they should try as hard as they can to get... In the ballpark Absolutely. Of, of what it is. Absolutely. Like they might not, maybe the girl's not, maybe the girl's not 100% Pakistani. Maybe she's like a quarter, but whatever. Like she could be Indian also. It doesn't have yeah, to be Pakistani. Could, yeah, it's yeah, the same thing. It doesn't thing. have, but they have to get as close to, as possible to Correct. represent that Correct. character. Yes. And that's it. That's like, it. Yep. It's that simple. You want somebody who embodies the character. Now, it, that's what everybody wants. Like every person who loves comic book characters wants to see those characters brought to life. It doesn't always happen that and, way, does and, it? And, and, I think that that's the most important thing. The writing of it, that happens behind the scenes. Um, the characters, uh, Black Panther was invented by two Jewish dudes. Yep. So, I mean, that doesn't really matter. Like, it's it's like, but uh, you can't have a Jewish guy playing Black Panther. That's weird. <laughs> no. Nope. Stan Lee's there. Like, I'm Black Panther. You know, it doesn't hey, make okay, sense. Hey, Okoye, where's my cane? Yes. Uh, but, Ruggs, I'll, you. Let me, I'll go meet no, you now. Oh, this. yeah, go ahead. I was going to say. Ideally, as like Rogue Boy said, you want the exact person, yeah. almost to yeah. a T. But I mean, in the movie industry, you'll see you see British people play American characters all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. You see Americans play British characters all the time. You see, you know, someone play an Irish guy that's you know Italian in real life. You, see, you even see like Chadwick Boseman play. Now, Wakanda's not a real place, but you see. He's an American. He's playing really. a, like an African. I mean, he's an African yeah, American. He's, but he's an African. from here. Yeah. And he's playing a guy that's from Africa. Right. Like, right. It's different. Yep. So ideally, you want it, but I don't think it matters as long as that person can act and do their research. 
And I'm not going to shit on your question, J H U L S F. No, it's a great, it's a great question. You guys kind of uh, echoed exactly what I was thinking. Now, look, there's a couple of famous examples. Let's not have another Fisher Stevens in short circuit. Right now, Ben Kingsley played Gandhi. He's fucking incredible in that movie. Him, I'll give a fucking pass because you forget it's Ben Kingsley. Uh, however, there a lead character that is a Pakistani American lead. You don't get that in movies all the time. And to have your family, like I have at least a cast of the Pakistani family members. What you said, Rugs, is exactly correct. They need to start with looking at Pakistani, Indian, American descent people. Try as hard as you can to find this person. And I think the talent is out there. They may not have been the talent may not have been out there when they made Short Circuit or Gandhi. The talent is definitely out there. I think of right away, I think of the girl from Stranger Things. Uh, one of those punk girls, the Indian girl who had the the powers to make people see what what she wanted them to see. She could be a good Kamala Khan. Now, if you can't if you can't find someone that fits and you have exhausted every fucking person, by all means, go on, find the right person who can act that fits. But, uh, you know, not every day you get a lead female Pakistani American character to cast. That's amazing. Don't fuck this up, MCU. And I don't think they will. But you're right, Rugs. The character is written as Pakistani American. Try to get close. I to think that. that you just have to be true to the character as much yes. as you can. Yes. You're not going to lo- like, like, look, put it this way. Frank Castle has never been played by an Italian guy ever. True. Like Dolph Lundgren. True. Fucking Tom Dolph Jane. Lundgren can't even speak English. Fucking <laughs> any guy that played the part, Ray Steve, none of them have been Italian dudes. Correct. None of them. Correct. So, but they try to get as close as they can. They haven't really nailed it, but like, okay, at least they made an effort, yeah. you know, to yeah. get in the same direct. I mean, Dolph Lundgren was a guy who was blonde hair and they made him dye his hair black. So they tried to get him to look like the Punisher. So, uh, you know, as long as they're making a, an effort to get it, like with Aquaman, they just completely change the character. It's fine, but yeah. I'm like, you know, you know, there's an example where they just deviated from the character. And so the it works Flash for that, supposed right? supposed to be blonde-haired. Right. But that, yeah, even that, yeah. like the essence of the character is there. Yeah. But this is supposed to be a Pakistani-American, you know, so... To do the best you can, let's hire uh, hire some of these individuals. You, the talent is out there. There's like just Silicon Valley has a bunch of uh, Indian Pakistani girls in in the show, and they're they're coders and they're, they're out. What there. do you think of? Uh, they have to be they have to be a certain age. Well, look, this is the it's this Peter Parker. She's got to be like a teenager. Like this is you're gonna be. She's in high school, so, so she's got to be high school. She's got to be able to play high school age. Doesn't have to be high school age. Right. Play high school age. It's high school Kamala Khan dealing with, you know, a, a, a religious family and having one foot in the Eastern culture and the Western culture, which is something I'm yeah, familiar my, with. My but on top old. of that, she's got powers that she has to keep secret and save people. It's great. Yeah. What'd you say? I said, my pick's too old. That's Janina Gavankar. But, uh, oh, I don't know who that is. Uh, she's she's hot, but she's kind of getting up there. Ah, uh, you gotta play. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, put, I'll, I'll give you a link. Like a twenty-year-old you know. will be fine. Like Tom Holland's twenty; he still looks like in high school. Uh, that's the show, everyone. Thanks for listening, Rugs. Where can the listener find you? On Twitter, where I was kicked off. Oh, you fu- were you were banned for a hot I second. Was banned, I was oh, banned yeah. from Twitter. Cardi B fans what? got it. Yeah, no, no, it was, B. I got banned for <laughs> telling the guy who made the new Thundercats that he should behead himself with the Sword of Omens. Uh, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, that's a little aggressive, Ruggs. Wait, How, yeah, but I mean, you, there, the Sword of Omens doesn't exist, so you can't do it. Th- that's a good point. Uh, have you seen, by the way, in that article, listener, check out the article. There's a video of the producer, and this, it's the, this fucking guy has like a little man bun, and He's saying, like, I love the Thundercats. I want to honor him. And I was like, you love the Thundercats? Are you putting this fucking horseshit out? Go fuck yourself, sir. Right. Sorry. That Thundercats thing got me so mad. I never get mad. It's crazy. You, um, yeah, you're fired up. Dude, they just fucking, like, very rarely do things get me that fired up. And the minute I saw it, I was like, no. No, just no. Oh, this girl is very cute. Janina Gavankar. Yeah, she's like, getting a little old, but, like, she uh, still looks young. She could play, you know what? She could play the older sister. There's an older sister. Oh, there you go. In the show. I mean, you're going to need like a whole family. You're going to need the brothers. Like you just get the cast of the big sick in Silicon Valley, put them in the show, put them in uh, Miss Marvel. You're good to go. Anthony, are you hydrated? How are you feeling? Any better? Any worse? Uh, You know what? I'm not because you're doing okay. You did all right. You had a little bit of life. 
We appreciate you. Uh, yeah, you making know what? It I, was able to, I was able to hang in there. <laughs> we appreciate you, listener, for listening this week. Of course, as always, tell a friend, spread the geekery. We would love you forever. Thanks for listening. For the Jock and Nerd Podcast, my name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. And he's a nerd. And we'll see you next time. Yes, it? Yes, it? <laughs> I mean, yes, we will. Let's yes, go. it? Yes, it or not? Holy shit. Get your hand off my penis!